Well, the Rockford Ice Sox 2018 called a cup playoff run, unfortunately came to a close of the hands of the Texas Stars. But don't you worry. We promised you championship hockey in Rockford once again. Hello, everybody. Joseph Zakszewski with you. And I'm joined alongside a very special guest for this evening's Ice Sox Rewind and a general manager of the year in the ECHL. But he was also the bench boss for your Ice Sox back in 2007, leading him to a UHL championship in Steve Martinson. Is that game seven against the Kalamazoo Wings is tonight's featured Ice Hogs Rewind. And Steve, great to catch up with you. We see you all throughout Rockford throughout the summers, too. Last time I caught up with you was at City Market. Yeah. A little different scenario now. I'm broadcasting my basement. You're in your living room. We're kind of confined no, to our I'm, spaces. I'm in my but, office. Oh, Yo, you're in your I'm office. Sure. Okay, that, even better. I, I, but unfortunately, we're not guess, at the rink right now. Normally, we'd be in the middle of a playoff push. How are you holding up with the stay-at-home orders? You just got back into town in Rockford. So uh, how have you been? Good, sir. Yeah, you know, I, I I I wear my mask most of the time when I go out, but you know, I've I've been my wife and I we don't go out much anyway, so it hasn't really been a big adjustment. And once we get up to Rockford, you know, the, we always tell everybody if we can't get there by boat, don't invite us. So, you know, we have an island that we spend a lot of time on. So once we get here, we don't really go anywhere anyway. So usually go to the rink, but that's obviously kids can't play right now, so even that's out. Well, congratulations to you. Unfortunately, the ECHL season was cut short, but you earned the ECHL General Manager of the Year Award with the Allen Americans. Another quality year with Allen for you. I mean, what was it like to receive that award? I know you had a record-breaking team once again. Unfortunately, uh, the playoff push was not meant to be, but certainly thrilling to be recognized by the coaching staff that voted you as GM of the Year. Yeah, you know, it feels good because it's the coaches that vote for it, so. You know, I mean, when, when you get it from, you know, your own people, it's it's kind of a little bit better, I think. But, um, you know, really, it's a kind of reflection. And you guys saw one of my best players, Gabe Godney. You know, that when you when you have success as a coach or a GM, it's really because your players have done a really good job. And and we had some great players, and, and uh, they were fun to watch and fun to coach. Well, Gabriel Gagne worked wonders right from the very first game. He was in a nice uh, yeah. uniform scoring right away, and, and he's earned himself a deal now uh, getting ready for what could be the rest of this year, if not the beginning of next year. So just one of the many young players that you have helped shape uh, to help out the Rockford Ice Hogs here this day. But for you this year, I don't want to call it a bounce back year because you've only missed the playoffs twice in your entire yeah. coaching career. But the season before with Allen, you only had 25 wins. So to have this kind of turnaround so quickly had to be rewarding for you personally. You know what? It, it's kind of weird. You know, it, it's it's you, it, sometimes I guess it's in the cards, but we had so many good players get hurt that we had five forward season ending injuries in the first eight games. And I've never seen anything like that. And it was like, it was kind of our quality, you know, go to glue guys and, and, and all top players. So the guys that replaced them with, you know, some of them weren't great defensively. It wasn't really a, a group that you, you know, the guys that we built the team around were all the guys that got hurt. So it was a painful – I thought we were going to come back. We made some deals, and, and then our goaltending really hurt us when, when our goalie got called up. So it was a – trust me, it was a tough year. It was a painful year, and one I don't like to really talk about. Well, you had a great year this year, and in fact, looking at your more personal accolades for you, uh, you became now the second winningest coach in North American pro hockey history. Now, 1,043 wins. You only have to track down the legendary Hall of Famer, Scotty Bowman, who's got 1,200 and change on you, but now you move up another rank. I read a couple articles. You mentioned that you're more focused on team accolades and team championships, but at the end of the day, were you able to th sit back and think of that accomplishment, moving to second all-time in pro North American history, and maybe think about what the next few seasons have in the, in the tank for you, and maybe you could challenge that record. Yeah, you know, it wasn't until I, I thought maybe I'd switch gears and get into, you know, move back up here and maybe get into scouting and stuff, but um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to stay with coaching and, and, uh, you know, I, I tell Stan that I'm coming after his dad now. So, um, obviously he's, you know, I have, I have the, the Rockford Ice Hawks had a giveaway, you know, a, a, a bobblehead and one of the, one of them's left at my house. Cause you know, one of the players left it here and I, I have that in my office. So I have conversations with Scotty Bowman once in a while and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> Well, again, congratulations, and uh, you're going to try and track him down as best you can. We look forward to doing that. But, again, moving up the ranks this year, passing up legendary ECHL and just a legend of the game and Coach John Brophy to move into second place. So, I mean, you're, yeah. you're in some pretty I good company you, there, though, good sir. Brophy, 
Rofi, uh, Rofi and I didn't like each other too much. He, he, he uh, one time I, I got in a fight right in front of their bench uh. in St. Catharines and it was so funny. He, the penalty box was next to their bench and he came up with his big goofy smile and his, and his you know, his bangs, blonde haired, gray bangs. And he's standing behind, you know, the legendary Val James and he's grinning at me and he's pointing at Val. He's going, Hey, Martinson, guess who you're fighting next? And, uh, so I mean, I had he he, they, he always had tough teams, and uh, I, I think I had more fights against that guy's that guy's team than anybody. So that's one guy I didn't mind passing up. <laughs> or if I run into him someday, maybe in, you know if they if they if they really have those hockey games somewhere, I always say Valhalla would work for me. And you know, I like to get a hold of him in a hockey game and maybe smack him around a little bit. But that'll be <laughs> we'll have to see if that's if we're going to be able to do that. Playful rivalry on and off the ice between you and, and Mr. Brophy. Well, again, congratulations on the accomplishment. And let's go ahead and dive into the tonight's Ice Hogs Rewind. So thankful that you are yeah. a special guest this evening. I know a lot of fans excited to watch Game 7 of the 2007 UHL Colonial Cup Finals. By this time, when you were the head coach of the Ice Hogs, it was your third season, but you were already a five-time league champion, five championships with San Diego. You get the one with Rockford, then you move on and win another giant handful with all other organizations, especially the Allen Americans, whether it's the ECHL or the Central Hockey League. But walk us through, I guess, the preparation for this season. You had another fantastic regular season. You cruised through the first rounds, Fort Wayne and Quad City, no problem there, combined 8-2 and two record. And then you go in against Kalamazoo, a team that you know well from the regular season, but it seemed like this was going to be a different kind of series. And it looked like it by the results with the home team doing so well. But as a prepar in preparation as yeah. a coach trying to deliver the first championship in, in, in city history and team history, that's a tough task to put on your shoulders. And you know, you know what, 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 I'm not sure everybody remembers, but we had the youngest team that ever won a championship in the Colonial League. And, and we really had like an ECHL team. We were loaning players. And, you know, when we beat Fort Wayne, um, you know, we only finished a point behind them and we lost the first game. And they thought, you know, they were getting them, but we just pounded them and, and pound them. And they had an older team and, and, uh, you know, Reed's from, from Kalamazoo and made a comment once when he was coaching in Missouri. He said, uh, or excuse me, one of the, he wasn't coaching in Missouri. One of the guys that you know, he was trying to recruit was looking at going to Missouri. And he said, well, okay, go in that division and have to play against Rockford, you know, all season. And back then we had Johnson and Big Snake and Watson and Caleb Betts. We had a lot of guys that really, that could play, but really hammered teams. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, reflected when I was just thinking tonight. I, you know, reminded me, we really had a young team, and Kalamazoo had an older team. And, you know, we were under the salary cap at times that year because we loaned so many players. So um, I think it was, you know, it was a different type of style, but uh, they had a great team. I mean, they, they had some veteran guys and, and a lot of guys with that AHL experience. And we had a lot of guys kind of looking to move up at the time. And, and uh, it was two different types of teams. What was it like moving into a game at seven? You're back at home at the Rockford Metro Center, now BMO Harris Bank Center. The home team has won every game in the series so far, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. You go to Kalamazoo, they took care of business in their building. You come back to Rockford, you did pretty well in, in the uh, first couple of games there. But game seven, it, it doesn't matter what the record is and, and how I'm seeing professional sports. Pretty much take everything off the table. It's, it's do or die and then just the battle of attrition and wills at that point. You know, it, it home ice, and it, it's depending on how balanced your team is. You know, you get the last change, and it and it and it's different than the NHL because you have four lines. It's a little bit, little bit different animal to you know to, in matching your defense against the top lines. But at, at, at our level, it's three three lines against three, and you know three sets of D. And I think we were going five D at times there. Um, you know, the rosters were, were much smaller than the American League, so we could only dress six defensemen and, and uh, ten forwards. And then I think we were only allowed to carry 21 players. Like, we had to drop guys that were here all year. They had some crazy rules back then. But, um, you know, going against Kalamazoo, they had that veteran. They had some really good veteran players. And I remember, you know, I don't want to jump ahead, but when we scored with about a minute and a half to go, Corbyl scored in. And I remembered we'd had those guys down several times during the year, and they'd pull the goalie and score. And they had six 
you know, I remember all the players now. If I went back and, you know, watched the game, I, but when, when we got that seventh, that, that third goal to go up and, and it was a huge crowd. And I think, you know, you could just hear the screaming and, and, you know, when I came to Rockford, you know, it was, I had my, my work cut out for it. Cause when I, when I was rec recruiting, it was a lot different than recruiting to San Diego. So, um, it was really, you know, felt good about, you know, knowing that I was going to be leaving and, and keeping my house here. And, you know, it was a place that I wanted to come back to in the summertime. So it was a good feeling. And I think the crowd, I mean, that last minute and a half after Corville scored was the loudest I can remember. Well, and you walked us right into the game, which is what I was going to dive into. You get the game's opening goal, a shorthanded goal to get things started pretty early on. Then Kalamazoo comes back and scores. You go up two to one, but still the puck can bounce any which direction. And then you get the uh, the sealer right there, right at the very tail end. And then a lot of fans bring up. the second goal. I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so the, the second goal, you know, we got the we, – Jason Norderman was a really scrappy guy. And, and he wasn't a real big guy, but he was really a greasy, greasy player. And the puck was in front of the net. And he went to the net. And that's one of the things that he did well. I think he only weighed 180 pounds. And he went to the front and it just kept hacking and whacking at the puck. And then you see him jump up. And, you know, you can't see the puck from – from the bench but when you see the player jump you know you're just looking to say okay they're keeping that as a goal and uh because i don't think we were always getting the best calls at that time uh you know there was times in the united league that that uh i questioned some of the officiating but anyway it was uh to see Norman get that goal and get the lead you know you felt good going in the third period well, it's funny, Brie, I, when I watched back and I was listening to Mike Peck on the broadcast and I watched that goal too, the hacking and whacking, and then it trickles over the goal line and seeing the linesman sprint in there from way out on the angle, I kind of wondered that too. I was like, well, are they going to blow it dead or how are they going to work that out? But yeah. it turned to uh, work out pretty well for you guys in the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, but it was a vintage. If, if you knew Norderman, it was just, a, just the way that, that he played. He was just a greasy, you know, hard-nosed guy. and. Went to the net and got it done. Well, another memory that a lot of fans bring up, too, outside of the goals being scored and how energetic that building was, was towards the very tail end, the game was almost in hand. It wasn't quite over yet, but Chaz Johnson decides to put on a little dancing show at center ice. As a yeah. uh, coach, I can't imagine – I don't know. What were your thoughts when you, when you saw that? Because I feel like in today's day and age, if you were to do that, you probably have to, to answer to somebody in some way, shape, or form down the line. But to watch Chaz Johnson put on a little line dance at center ice in front of everybody with only a few moments left had to be uh, an interesting moment for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but Ch Chaz was a huge part of our yeah, – I think he was a first-year player that year. I can't remember if it was the second year. Might have been a first or second year. I can't remember if he was – he was. He might have been signed by by uh, Milwaukee, or I know he ended up signing later with with our affiliate. But you know, he was a he was an electrifying player, and we had you know we had Watson Watson who was like a like a big Mack truck, and Johnson I used to say was like the torpedo, and uh, you know they when when they opened up the game and everybody said okay you know it was gonna it's gonna be just an offensive game. The guys that could really skate and hit. You know, like those guys, nobody could hold them up anymore. So, um, you know, our team back then, you know, if it, it was is a, it was more like St. Louis. Like I loved that St. Louis won the Stanley Cup last year because I always said it's you know they they played macho hockey and you know they their offensive players were were really good offensively and everybody chipped in physically and obviously the third and fourth line guys you know led the way but their their top guys were you know were also hitting and hard to play against and. I thought that was the, you know, when, when my teams have won and but done well, I just tell people that's the way we play. That's the way, you know, the way St. Louis played. And, and that's the way that team was. That team was, you know, we were tracking down. I remember when we beat Fort Wayne and like I said, that they went up the first game, but we knocked the ever living crap out of their defensemen. And, you know, three games into the series, they didn't want to go back and get the puck anymore. No. And I don't blame them, too, with the size. And it's kind of a, a hockey style of a bygone era, given today's size and or, uh, speed and skill over the, the size and the hitting aspect. But certainly a lot of fun to watch that game seven. Now, the celebration has begun. The trophy is handed out. Coach, you win your sixth championship at the time, sixth of now ten league championships in your career. 
it's hard to rank them. It's like ranking your children, but where does this one sit for you? And, and it must mean something special knowing how strong your connection is here to the state line community. Yeah. You know, you know what, what, what was different here is they hadn't really had, you know, they hadn't been winning before that. And, and I think, you know, we were kind of the hard, you know, the, you know, not the, the, the fairy tale. You like San Diego is a little bit different because it's San Diego. It's a different place to recruit to. And, the different, you know, you know, it's a different lifestyle there. And, and, you know, I think everybody really appreciated winning and uh, the type of team that we won with, I think was a, you know, reflection of, of the area. So, you know, it felt good that, you know, knowing that, you know, it was my last year here and, and, you know, I thought we, the first year we had a pretty good team. The second year we had some injuries and we went up against the second year that that's when Danbury was in the league and they were about 500 grand over the salary cap. And there was a there was a lot of stuff going on, and and Kalamazoo was like a hundred grand over the cap, and we were like ten thousand under because we'd loaned so many players, and uh, they had a they had a deal that year where they said we were going to do a, a luxury tax, and uh, Kalamazoo said they weren't paying it because they knew what other teams were paying, and I didn't want to get in a sidetrack with that, but you know our, our team was completely different. It was a young team, and you know, a lot of guys had come from the coast because they were protected by teams and couldn't get a race. So it was, it was a lot different, but it was a really good, you know, culmination of, uh, of coming here and knowing that I'd be leaving, but with the idea of coming back someday. Well, Coach Martinson, again, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your memories of this 2007 uh, UHL championship with the Ice Hogs and the Colonial Cup finals against Kalamazoo. Uh, it's going to be a fun Ice Hog rewind tonight. I know our fans are looking forward to it. And we're also going to be rebroadcasting our conversation and the game again on the actual anniversary, which will be on May 24th. So keep an eye out for that one as well. But, Coach, again, congratulations, ECHL General Manager of the Year. You move into second, the second winningest coach in North American professional hockey history. It just gets better for you. Hopefully we can get back to the rink soon, and we look forward to seeing you rack on a few more wins uh, now moving into another year for you. Thanks, Joe. And I think I'll be – I might be watching that game. I don't think I've watched that game since uh, – in fact, I don't think I've ever watched it. I think I just saw some highlights of it. So I might be tuning in on Friday night for that game too. Friday night, 6 o'clock. We look forward to it. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Right. And have a wonderful night. And everybody, enjoy tonight's Ice Hogs Rewind. Thanks, Joe. Welcome back to the Metro Center alongside Tim McKim. I am Mike Peck, Jim Stone ringside. Lindsey Scott, the producer of Ice Hawks Hockey tonight. Rockford will move left to right on your radio dial here in this first frame. To our left-hand side, Frederick Cloutier for your Ice Hawks. The Hawks are clad in their home white sweaters with red trim along the waist and on the elbows. On the wing side, Ryan Nye, the wings will move right to left on your radio dial. The wings in blue sweaters with red trim. And Tim, these are the sweaters in which the Wings wore when they won the Turner Cup in the International Hockey League in 1979. Well, you know, glory days, there's a reason for that song. You just can't relive the past. Off the draw, we're underway. And let's hope that's the case tonight. Hogs won it, but Willis picked it off in the neutral zone, sent it deep. Carlander with a big hit behind the goal. Willis to Carlander, centering pass, deflected in front. Johnson will pick it up for the Hogs. He'll work it up ice at the line. Elzinga picked up Besser. Fred Ulansky had it swiped away from him down there as he tried to shift it to the forehand. Johnson hard into the near side wall, but the puck is cleared to the neutral zone. Pritchard will rim it in for Rockford. Far side, Brown chopped it up the far side. Johnson will run into him. Willis out with it. Crossed the near side over the Rockford line. Fritzschau will clear. Now at the line, actually Elzinga held. Crossed it for Bootland. Bootland shot in front. That one knocked away by Fritzschau. Mitzi will pick it up. Cleared it to the neutral zone. Step in front of everyone. And it's dumped at the Rockford line. Fritzschau again. Who needs to step off for a change. Ties it up at the line. The wings are offsides. 56 seconds in. No score. And we might see some sloppiness in the first maybe five minutes of this hockey game. And that's why it's going to be so crucial. Well, right away, Kalamazoo came out. It was that Carlander that just knocked yep. Pritchard down yep. with a major check. So, they, you know, there's two teams on the ice. You know, we get a little caught up in the ice dog. I mean, the Cavings are really jacked quite the same way. Detulio won in from set. The Wings will set it up in their own side. McAllister hit over there by Betts. Puck cleared to the neutral zone. Now it's picked up McAllister again. <laughs> Sent to the Rockford line. Watson had the puck blocked down as he tried to clear it in. DeTulio far side, pass blocked by Doucette. 
Right now the Hogs having a lot of their passes blocked by the wings. Letizia to do set, chopped over. Chased down by Nye, he'll send it up the near side. Bets in, played it to a pile. What a the big hit near side, but it's picked up by the wings back the other way. At the line, Tony's drive is blocked down by Cloutier. Now Letizia, crossed in the middle, turned over. Down low McLean and it swiped away. Center request, Cloutier with the save. Rebound to the high slot here, the Hawks dodge a bullet. Penalty coming up on Rockford, and the Ice Hawks careless with the puck in their own zone, and the wings on the power play, just 144 in. Well, what a save by Cloutier. He had to get that pad out there quick. Absolutely quick as a cat. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure on these goaltenders, too, you know. Well, now, Toltzman said Kalamazoo was shorthanded, but I think it's the Ice Hogs who are shorthanded. Well, I don't even want to talk about what the deal is. Now, the Ice Hogs, or the Wings penalty box door is still open. And they, they're questioning it, Mike, because we had the puck on our way out, and then he blew the whistle. So that's why there's some confusion. It looks like set for Rockford to the box. Okay. And it will be a Wings power play. They're second in the UH on the postseason at 17%. The Ice Hogs penalty kill fifth at 85.6. And the Hawks special teams haven't been their strong suit. Well, this is huge now. It has to be their strong suit tonight. Off the draw, it's won by the Wings, but Noterman will slap it back to the Kalamazoo zone. Carl Lander will pick it up in the corner, back in his own end. Two minutes in, no score. Carl Lander looking up ice. Crossed it at the line for Nick Tonys. Tonys will chip it in. Here's Willis down low. Willis around near side to DiTulio. DiTulio to Willis. Back to DiTulio near side corner. To the point for Tonys. Tonys crossed it, Carl Lander. Playing the point, found Bootland down the wing. Down to Willis now. And the corner to Tulio near side. De Tulio kind of net, centered it in front, chopped up the near side. Mitzi will pick it up and shift it up into the crowd there. And Mitzi was anticipating that pass a little bit too much, and it never got to him. Yeah, and you really have to be defense first when you're killing the penalties in the D zone like that. You don't be looking for offensive breaks right now, you know what I'm saying? Play that uh, high percentage game. We're good enough to get our breaks when we get them. Face up in the neutral zone as it was deflected out by the wings. One by Ulansky, Fritja picks it up and fires it back to the Kalamazoo zone. Still 1.15 left on the wings power play. Carl Lander will pick it up, same line out there for Kalamazoo. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, back the other way. At the line, Ulansky trying to break it up, picked up Tony, now Ulansky picks it up. Short-handed, over the line, two on two, Ulansky high side and the Short-handed by Paul. side wall for Ryan to the point hit Kindle held but it was blocked by Norderman sails back to nine that was the Hogs first shot of the games the Wings have three so far 17 left on the new set minor at the line pass underneath Ryan but it's picked up far side Marley shot in front Cloutier will knock it down and covered nine left on the power play one up in Rockford three 35 into the opening frame. You know, and it might sound funny, Mike, but when you score a shorthanded goal like that, and, and you know, in a big game like this, you got to remind your players we're still shorthanded. Yeah. Because sometimes you, you come through the line, you high five, and you forget what's really going on. Yeah. A little, and then you get a little offensive right. here, right? Off the draw, the wings won it on top. Now taking it down low, shot was well wide, rimmed all the way back to the wing zone. Ice or the power play over. The wings are over one. Now Zenga back to pick it up. 
That's one of the few times they haven't held the zone. Yeah, and I think Elzinga just misread it. Corbin will dump it back in. Hogs back to full strength. Elmo. Yulansky with a hit on Elzinga. Got it back. Elzinga did. Coughed it up. Johnson now. Couldn't dump it deep. Cut off by Willis. Elzinga again. Up to Carlander. Carlander had it shoved away there by Yulansky. Corbin will feed Fritsch on the Rockford zone. Fritsch cross it right on the tape of Willis. And they're offsides. And we'll drop it in the neutral ice. 4-16 in. And that's the second poor pass that the Hogs have made that has almost resulted in a, a really nice scoring opportunity for the Wings. And that's one of those plays that, as a defenseman, when you're behind the dot, you don't make that cross ice pass in your zone. It's the risk reward. The risk is you got a shot on goal against the reward is you're only out of your zone. So you got to weigh it. It's not worth it for that pass. Off the draw, Missy won it from McLean. Passer behind the Ice Hogs goal now. Near side wall, shoved it up ice for Ralph, who cleared. Back at the wings end, it's recovered by Capanigri. Behind the goal, Norderman pressuring. Norderman chopped it away, Capanigri lost it. Norderman on the wall, picked up by Ralph, back to Norderman. Passed it off down low for McAllister. Mitzi trying to tie him up, McAllister. Hit there by Norderman, or by Ralph that is. Ralph would dig it out. Ralph now to Mitzi. Trying to work behind the net, sealed off there. Penalty coming up on the wings, McAllister for interference. And the Hogs on the power play at fourth, 48 on the opening frame. And that penalty occurred because Ralph absolutely hit McAllister as hard as he could. Of course, he bounced off because McAllister is a wall. But he actually moved a little bit that time, McAllister. Right, but he actually moved a little. Yep. But he was mad. And then Ralph did a nice job. He gave the puck to Mitzi and that stood in the way. You know, McAllister knocked him over. Made a screen and McAllister cross-checked him. So it was a great play by Ralph. one nothing Rockford, their first power play of the night. Hogs are fifth in the UHL, 12.3%. The Wings penalty kill sixth. And 83.7 off the drop, puck slides down low to the wing, now Corbet in front for Johnson. Johnson shot block, got it back to Corbet far side wall. They'll restart it there. Corbet looking, down low for Ulansky now. Ulansky, far side, still looking, down low for Corbet. Corbet in the corner, Hogs trying to stretch it out, Lutz on top, the big drive was wide, that was a rocket. Jens. They'll wrap it in deep for the Hawks. Slides all the way around the far side. Lutz will pitch in. Picked it up. Found Johnson down though. Johnson fell down. Oh, they're going to call a penalty on the wings. Here's Ulansky to Corbett. Touched up Carlander. And the Hawks are going to have a minute and 21 of five on three. And Tim, I felt Johnson went down on his own. I didn't think that was a hook. So, once again though, Cyril was on the other side of the rink. And he saw the positioning was there was a stick in the area and Johnson went down. You know what I mean? If, I think if he was on the other side, he yep. probably wouldn't have made that call. Jeff Brown to the box for the wings and the Ice Hogs have a five on three. And this is what killed them last game. They didn't score on it. Yeah, well, you got Mitzi out there at point now with Lutz and Ulansky center. Carlander won it. Mitzi to the point for Lutz near side. Hodge will set it up. Five on three, Lutz down low for Ulansky. He'll deflect it behind the goal. And now it rolls up the near side, Johnson over. To the point for Lutz, cross it to Mitzi, near side, Ulansky. Lost it, boy, he had. Corbet open in front, he just took his eye off it. Lutz to Ulansky. Back to Lutz on top, looking, crossed it, Mitzi. Mitzi in the middle, down low now to Corbet far side. He'll skate it to Lutz on top. Lutz looking, Ulansky. Near side wing to Lutz in the middle. Touch pass to Corbet. Corbet in the middle. He'll unload. Knocked down by Nye. Up the far side wall. Here's Mitzi for the Hogs. Tied up over there. Chopped behind the goal. Yulansky. He'll bank it to the point, but back to the Rockford zone. And the Ice Hogs will change. Well, maybe uh, Johnson off. Watson on. Here's Corbet over. Corbet. Far side. Gillis will poke it away. That's wrapped up the near side wall. Yulansky there. In the middle, now Mitzi, fan on the one-timer. Over to Lutz now. 14 left on the five on three. Yulansky down low to Watson. Watson near sidewall. To the point for Lutz. Picked it up on the backhand. Lutz in the middle. Lutz, he'll unload. Nye with the save. Rebound let out. That's picked up, Corbett. Wings get a skater back. Corbett shot in front was wide. Yulansky now to Watson. Watson. To Mitzi, to Lutz, the one-timer, now with another blocker save. Corbet lost it behind him, and it's deflected over the netting. Hogs are 0 for 1 on the power play. Seven minutes in, 1-0 Hogs. 
And they got 25 seconds left on a five on four. And if you notice, and, and that is because of the, the importance of this hockey game and the crowd and just the intensity, pucks are hitting our sticks and they're bouncing a little bit. We're not catching them clean right now. So yeah. as, as the players relax, it'll be a little better. But you know, right now is when we had the five on three. And the Wings win that draw and they'll clear. Cloutier couldn't play it. And that trapezoid now knocked it down as it slid back behind the goal. Jens for the Hogs, behind the net to Besser. One last rush for the Hogs, Nordeman will wrap it in. Knight got a piece of it, set it down, but the puck rolls to the corner for Betts. Betts over, trying to dig it out with Doucette, lost it. Carlander now, to the point, Jens will hold. Hogs over two and a huge kill for the Wings. Puck rimmed up the near side wall. Bootland couldn't catch it. Here's Jens for Rockford to do set. Do set now. He'll dump it in. Gill has bumped him off. Rockford will change. Hogs managed four shots on that five on three, Tim, but boy, they looked really, really sporadic on the two man advantage. They look tight. They look tight. Here's Lutz for Rockford. Banked it up to Corbet. Corbet now for Ulansky over the line. He blew a tire, and the Wings now will try to play it back the other way. Three on three. Willis chopped out there by Corbet. It's picked up by Lutz. Banked it around, Tony's will hold on top. He'll bat it like a baseball player into the corner. Now Lutz behind the net for Fritzsche on near side. Fritzsche, near side to Johnson, to Ulansky, and he'll backhand it in. Rockford will change as Nye blocked it down. 8-20 in, 1-0 Rockford. Tony's to the middle for Ryan. Derek Ryan over the line. Ryan's shot was well high. Long carom, funny bounce in the corner now. Ryan will pick it up. Shot in front was well wide. Watson over with Tony's. And Watson with a big hit over there. Penalty coming up on Watson though. And what are they gonna call him for? Probably a rough. And that's what it'll be. Well, he's not happy with the call, but he did skate right to the box. So I'm sure Steve talked to everybody about the importance of let's just, you know, whether we like it or not, go to the box and stay, you know, stay focused on task. 8.37 the time of the call. Kind of got the arms up a little bit when he went in for the hit. Yeah, I can see how he could have called it or couldn't have called it, you know, but certainly uh, Tony will remember it, though. <laughs> yeah. one nothing Rock for the Wings' second power play of the evening. They are, of course, 0 for 1. Mitzi into Tulio will take it. Mitzi won it. Down low, here's Fritzsche. He'll fire near side up into the Ice Sox bench. And we'll drop it to the right side there of Frederick Lucier. Hogs out shooting the wings 5-4 in the early going. Now, if Frick can take one more step or two more steps, he has a better angle, and that puck's all the way down, and he needs to do that, you know? Obviously trying to use the tall part of the glass and just missed it and fired at the bench. Mitzi on to Tulio, tied up on the wing now. Back to Mitzi, and he'll touch it back to the Kalamazoo zone. Norderman and Carlander will give chase. And the corner, Norderman will pull back as Carlander will set it up. And I know you uh, probably would like to see Norderman hit Carlander down there. Not necessarily. Penalty kill? Right. Here's Tulio over the line. Look out for Bootland in front. Hogs pick him up. Tulio still with it. On the right wing to Cloutier's left. Here's a centering pass and front stuck into the goal. Bootland got it. Big Cloutier five hole we're tied. Freddie got a piece of it there, Tim, but not enough. Well, Bootland was was standing alone, nobody tying up a stick right on top of the crease like that. And we had defensemen on each side and nobody picked him up specifically. They, they were like playing position but not getting Bootland. And I, you know, I think you'd want to really pay attention to Bootland. You might want him. Bootland now in the postseason has uh, 12 goals and 10 assists. And Carlander, I believe, will get the assist on that goal from DiTulio as well. Well, that's a good guess anytime at any game. <laughs> so we're tied at one here. Ulansky and Carlander won by Ulansky. Pass up to Ulansky. Willis actually got it. Looking for Corbet now. Corbet down low. And the corner for Rockford. Left it to Ulansky. Bumped off there by Carlander. Now Ulansky got it back. Lost it. Chopped away. Here's Willis. He'll clear the zone. Fritz shot for the Hogs, crossed it over for Corbett, hopped over his stick there. Caught a chip in the ice right before it got there. Now here's Johnson breaking over. Johnson locked away from him by Brown. And back the other way, he'll carry it. At the line for Bootland. Bootland in the middle, Carliner shot blocked there by Fritz shot. 
Johnson trying to clear it out, looking up ice now. That one deflected at the line. Corbet, far side, looking. Penalty coming up on the wings for holding. And Rockford back on the power play, 9.58, hooking him into the crawl. And Tim, more time than ever, the Ice Sox need their power play to come through. Well, we talked about it all year, and this will be a great time for it to come through. Now, he's been playing Bootlin and Carlander a lot on the PK. They certainly played on the power play, and we'll just see if they can continually play as much as they play and perform as well as they perform. Jeff Brown, another penalty. Hogs are 0 for 2 on the power play, and once again, they failed on the 5 on 3. And Carlander's taking the draw again. Mitzi will pit him on top of the right faceoff, circle in the wing zone. Carlander won it near his side wall, and McAllister will slap it back to the Rockford zone. Carlander will step off for Derek Ryan. Another reason to win the draw because then Carlander has to stay out there. Besser up ice at the line far side. Besser wrapped it around for Set. Funny bounce out the door, Set lost it. And Atulia will pick it up. And the glass fell out on the far side in the Kalamazoo zone. So we will drop it, I believe in the neutral ice, I'm guessing, are we gonna drop it in the KZU zone? But I didn't even see if it was a hit down there. Let's go downstairs to Jim Stone, who is standing in the Ice Ox tunnel. The hit the corner. I, you know what, fellas? Since uh, the last game and the way Corey Carlander dominated the faceoff circle, I've been keeping track tonight. 13 faceoffs so far. One, two, three, four, five, six of them won by Corey Carlander. The other one won by Derek Ryan. So it's pretty much 50 50 at this point in time. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got the stats going on tonight, fellas. Keeping track of, you better look on. We might have you keep that stat officially next year. You know, the one thing that I, I wish I would have is I wish I had a stopwatch for every time Corey Carlander was on the ice just to see how much he plays each period or bootlegging, either one of them. They're going to play probably four, over 40 minutes tonight. Well, it would be easier to just use your stopwatch when they're not on the ice. Yeah. You have less work to do. Yeah, that's, that's probably very, it's unbelievable how much those guys play. Yeah. They play a ton. What about this crowd, by the way? You know what? It's unbelievable. During introductions, it was electric. They've been electric. And uh, that goal was unbelievable by Ulansky when the place just went nuts. Now that last goal kind of quieted them down. But uh, I imagine they're going to get fired back up. I'm sure goal. they will. And, you know, we got the five on threes are killing us. You know, How do you not score when you get five on threes? I mean, we've talked about it. And all Tim said it. We've talked about it all year long. It's been, it, The power play has been a struggle for us. And, uh, you know, we've always said it could come back to hurt us, and who knows. But uh, I, I hate to see it. we got a power play now. we got a minute 40. Let's see if we can't make something happen here, and then it'll all be forgotten. By the way, light years faster replacing glass at the Metro Center of the Wink Stadium. Oh, my God. It, this would have been a 25-minute. And no helmets. Yeah. No helmets. That's why. The helmets slow you down. There you go. Well, thanks, Jim. All right, boys. Whoops, that's Jim Snow ringside. Wrong button there. That was the loud button I pressed. So we'll drop it. Now, my question would be why it's in the neutral zone, it's not our fault, or is it because home team's ice fell out? Uh, that's a great question. Because the puck was in the uh, offensive zone for us. Now they got ice the repairs blow. going on down in the ice hog zone. I'd like to know why it's outside the zone, if there was a ruling on that, because the puck was in the zone when the, the whistle blew. So we're tying at one here, midway through the first. By the way, it's brought to you by Rockford Bell Credit Union. For all your financial service needs, check out Rockford Bell. Rockford Bell has three locations at 4225 North Perryville Road, 702 Jefferson Street, 4 East Main Street. Rockford Bell is a full-service credit union, and they have been providing financial services in the Rockford community since 1935. Maybe because they blew the play dead before the Wings actually carried the puck out of the zone, but and they had full control. I don't know. Well, you can't assume that. Well, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I don't remember them doing doing this uh, when their glass fell. I don't remember them moving it out of the zone for them. Yulansky will take it against Carlander. Yulansky won it cleanly, but all the way back to the Rockford zone. Besser will chase it down, found Jens. Jens now looking up ice for Johnson. Johnson will push it up ice. Headman's it over the line near side around McAllister. Johnson now lost it behind the net, banked it around for Yulansky. It'll slide to the point, Besser. Slapped it back down low to Corbet. Picked it up far side wall to the point for Besser. Besser on top to the wing, Ulansky. Ulansky now circles far side. Looking down low, partially fanned on it, but slid it down to Corbet. Back on top, Besser crossed it, Jens. Jens shot in front, redirected just wide by Ulansky. Corbet to Johnson. 
Johnson for Ulansky near side. Banked it to the point for Jens. Jens' drive is kicked away by Nye. Now Ulansky had it hacked away on top and sliding and knocking it out of the zone was Carlander. 48 left on the power play for Rockford. The Hogs will swap forwards and the Wings will switch penalty killers. Once again, Besser up ice over the line. Besser had it poked away, got it back, sent it deep for Ralph. Cut off down there. Mitzi went in front. And that was yeah, Mitzi who went in front. And the Wings were able to pick it up uncontested. And once again, it's just a game of inches. And Mitzi went the wrong way there. And the Wings won that loose puck. Mitzi now will lead it again for Rockford. At the line for Ralph far side. Behind Willis. Willis hit him. Now Tony's in. Pass in front of Norderman to Elzinga. And now the Wings having an easy time getting it out of their zone. Rockford will drop to 0 for 2. Actually 0 for 3. Here's Lutz up ice. At the center ice line. Lutz. His shot deflected up into the netting. And will drop it in just right, inside guys. the line. But the Ice Ox and Wings power play right now night and day. Well, that's right, and uh, hopefully we'll get it going, and I'm sure that's going to be the difference in the game one way or the other. 1-1 one, one is the score here as we approach the 12-minute mark in the opening frame. Record playoff crowd on hand for game seven of the finals. Doucette and McLean in the circle, won by Doucette, picked up by Letizia. Letizia shot in front block, Watson trying to dig it out, and Letizia poked it wide. Now here's Doucette again. Back down low for Watson. Watson in the corner, McLean on his back. Now Betts in to help, he'll dig it out. Betts for Doucette. Doucette now, lost it, chopped up the far side, Camp and Egri there. Back checking Betts, it's chopped to the middle for Drake. Drake went down as Hessler had a beat on him. Wings will change and here's Letizia to Betts. Betts up ice, looking for Doucette. Doucette, high slot shot was wide. Watson trying to gather the rebound in. Betts got sniped down there, and the Wings will clear it out. Three on three, long drive by Drake. Puccio will knock it down and hang on. Minute break, we're tied at one on the Ice Sox Broadcasting Network. Welcome back to the Metro Center. 7-19 left in the first frame, and we're tied at one apiece. Alongside Tim Matilla, I'm Mike Peck, Jim Stone downstairs ringside. Lindsey Scott back at the WNTA studios. Final game of the season here. Game seven of the Colonial Cup Finals. Face off deep in the ice sock zone. It's won there by Carlander. Here's Elzinga. He'll skate it down low. Shot. Kluge with the save. He'll pounce on the rebound. And we'll drop it again to his right hand side. But once again, case in point, you win the face off and you get a good scoring opportunity. And that's what the Wings have done. Yeah, we need to at least not lose so cleanly and try and tie up these guys so we don't get shots on net on uh, every face off. We'll try it again to Cloutier's right. It's won by Carlander again. Hogs pressure the point. Brown shot on top. Cloutier will kick it down. Here's Bootland. Centering pass. Cloutier will poke check it to the neutral zone. And Brown will pick it up there. Knock down the rolling puck and Fennel Zinga. Worked up ice. Here's Bootland. Bootland's board pass. Let it up ice behind Brown. They said they were on sides. Here's at Ulansky. He'll clear it up the far wall. And it's dumped back in by Kalamazoo. Wings will change as it's recovered by Fritzsche. Fritzsche will dance up ice for Rockford and will backhand it in. Ralph will give chase. Down low, Brown. Wrapped it hard for Willis far side. Willis to the middle for DiTulio. Kick down Letizia. Fanned on it. Now tied up and here's Mitzi for Rockford. Around to Hessler. Corey Hessler for Ralph. Ralph to the middle looking for Mitzi but it was over his stick. Now DiTulio bumped off by Mitzi, but it's picked up by the Wings. Now here's Norderman picking it off. He'll dump it in, Nye will glove it, and Mitzi will crash and will have a face off deep in the Elmira zone. Some hellos to send out. Bob Hessler, Corey Hessler's father, couldn't make it down with the rest of the fam. I'd like to say hi to Bob listening back up in Minnesota. And also, how about Elmira? Little bar party around in third up in Elmira, and there they got the B2 on. And hi to those guys, and I don't even know if they got us on the broadcast. If they do, great. Hi to Owen and Robbie and the boys, and if not, we're just talking to whoever. <laughs> Face off to the right side of Nye. Off the draw, it's tied up. DeTulio will win it. McAllister wrapped it up the near side. In the neutral zone, Rycroft crunched there by Watson. Letizia up ice for Colbert, but it was broken up there. Watson got it back and dumped it in. 
Down low now, Tony's with Coburn. Coburn to it first. Coburn behind the net now. Looking for Doucette. That's the shot. Stacking the pants in front was nigh. Rebound up the far side wall. And Coburn was falling back to the defensive set, but here come the wings with a four on three. Doucette trying to bump Ryan off. It's playing at the line. And Watson will lose it now as McAllister swiped it away and dumped it in. Now Hessler. Kalamazoo changes, as does Rockford. Hessler being pressured. Uses the board near his side, hopped over the stick of Ralph, and played by Gillis. Hillboard passing up in front of Campanigri, and this will be an icing, as Besser was able to catch it. Boy, the Ice Hogs almost got caught in a line change there. Well, actually we did, they just didn't make a good play. Now Marley tried to get off there, he was at the end of his shift, so they do have a tired defenseman, you know. It's all about winning the draw, right? That's right. And McLean will take it against Mitzi. Fresh line out for the Hogs. And the Wings have half of a fresh line, and now conveniently we have ice repairs to be taken care of down there. And this will give the Wings a couple extra seconds to rest. Looks like just debris. All right, so here we go, Mitzi and McLean. Off the draw, one there by McLean, and Wisely Knight will scoop it up. So two things, Tim. Power play and face-offs. The Hogs have been very poor in both categories. Yep, and we need to get that corrected. And out comes uh, the Bootland Carlander line again. And Martinson will corner with Ulansky, Johnson, Corbin, Lutz, and Fritzshaw. We'll drop it to Nye's right again. Ulansky will take another. One by Rockford on top. Fritzshaw sets down the rolling puck. Shot in front was wide. Johnson with the rebound now. Down low for Ulansky. Behind the net, around Carlander now. To the point for Fritzshaw. Fritzshaw, shot in traffic, now with the save. Rebound was wide by Johnson. He read it perfectly, but just couldn't quite work the puck around him. Here's Ulansky, Corbe, Johnson in front of his knees, and the goal! Oh, they said he was playing with a hand pass. Oh, boy. Here we go. Going to wave off another goal for the Rockford Ice Hawks. Johnson from his knees. But they said it was a hand pass, and let's go downstairs to Jim Stone. Jim, was it a hand pass? I think it was a hand pass. The one thing I'm noticing, fellas, just on that last shift, did you notice Nick Boulin skating around, looking tired? He, he was. He took that shift off. He absolutely took that shift off, and uh, and it cost him. He had a chance to get the puck over here, and he just kind of coasted to it. But we got possession of it back. I think it was a hand pass. Well, you had, you had a better view than us. Yeah, I, th I lived, you know, I, it was kind of in front of me at the bottom. The player was blocking me, but it looked like he made the motion. He there. called it right away in yeah, the neutral zone. Thanks, Jim. Jens will wrap it in. Far side wall now on top, held in by Besser for Mitzi. Down low, Norderman. Norderman spins in the corner away from McLean. Norderman, high slot area to Besser. Crossed to Jens. Jens shot in front, deflected wide. Tony's will chop it to the point. Besser over. Sends it in front. Now Ralph in the corner. Ralph looking, centering pass blocked by Tony's. Ralph got it back to Mitzi. Mitzi, far side, cycled to Ralph. In the corner now, McLean on his back. Ralph to the point, Besser, back down low, and Tony's took out Mitzi with no call. Norderman in with a hit, but Ralph will try to cut it off. Drake now on top, couldn't clear, but the shot by Jens was blocked. Jens now tied up over there, and hard was Ralph, but it's Mitzi now. Mitzi over the line, and it poked away. Wings will turn it back the other way, and this will be an icing as it's touched up by Jens, but a good shift there by the Ice Hogs, Tim. Very good shift, and Ralph was working real hard, finishing checks, making plays, he's trying to get Mitzi the puck. You know, you can see he's trying to do that. And the Wings have conveniently forgot who is on the ice, so this will waste some time. Four away left here in the opening frame, we're tied at one goal apiece. Face off to Carl, or a nice left hand side. Let's say Carlin are taking it, but he's not out there because they couldn't change. They really work the system well, don't they? Yeah. Wings. And now here we got another issue. Somebody threw something over the bench, so they come over and save some more time. I mean, really, Mike. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Isn't it? Colburn and McLean will take it. Off the draw, Colburn wanted to set. High slot shot, knocked down. Picked up Colburn. Another drive that was blocked by McLean. Letizia for Colburn. That's picked up. Letizia will knock it down at the line. It's stuck underneath McLean and dumped in. Wings can't change. Two sets to the corner. Tony's wrapped it around. Letizia cut off over there. Got backed into the plane. Chipped it down low for two set. His centering pass. No one home. Now here's Letizia on top. Chopped it to Colburn. 
Bouncing puck. Coburn backhands it for Doucette. Looking for Watson. Watson now for Doucette in front. And he went top shot, but he missed it high. Coburn now lost it. Watson turns and fires. That was wide. Doucette to the point, Hessler. Hessler banked it down low. Behind the goal now, McAllister and Watson. Into the corner to Camp and Eager, and he'll clear it up ice. Drank will tip it back to the Rockford zone. Icing waved off. Both teams will change. Hassler for Johnson. Johnson near side. Got knocked down. It's played up the near side wall. Fritsch out. Blocked it away from Natulio. Now Kindle at the line for Ryan. But they're off sides. Three minutes left here in the opening frame. We're tied at one. Boy, Doucet had a lot of net to work with there. And he just fired it high. And he should have went high because now I was you know, stacking the pads and just doing the old Dominic Hasek thing. And uh, I mean, it was the right shot, just missed it. We've really carried the last five minutes right now, but we need to, you know, obviously finish. But certainly we've carried the play. And he's also set Carlander and Boomlin a little bit longer so he can play in the last two minutes, I'm guessing. And Mitzi won the draw from DiTulio. Corey Hassler will chase it down. Back out there with Letizia. Now Mitzi lost a near side. Hessler got it back, cleared it up to Ralph, banked it to Noderman. Noderman with Mitzi at the line, passed it behind him. Now Ralph will fire it in. Down low, Brown and Noderman into the corner hard. Brown will wrap it up the near side wall to Elzinga. This is usually the defensive pair that Carliner and Poulin are out with. Here's Hessler over the line for Mitzi. Stopped on top, the middle, the dizziest drive was blocked. Rebound on top. Corbin couldn't hold, but here comes DiTulio. At the line, his drive is deflected over the top of the goal. Corbin down low, rimmed it around for Johnson. Penalty coming up on, I believe, Rockford as Kindle got taken out behind the play. Kyle Lander will play it. Extra attacker out for the Wings. 2.05 left in the first. We're tied at one. Back the other way, Marley, long pass. Drake tipped it, Elzinga at the line now, knocked down. Well, you know they didn't blow, now they blow it dead. And we'll see what the penalty is. Interference to be the call on the Ice Hawks at 18.05. And uh, Reed's little uh, city car under Bullen is going to pay off because now he'll have them for the full two minutes and then they go in the locker room with the rest, you know, on the power play. So he rolled the dice there a little bit and, and now it's going to pay off for him. And by the way, the penalty Corbet just skated right through Marley and you can't do that. And that's what the penalty was. Yeah, Marley behind the play. Well, it was Kindle, excuse me. It's picked up, Marley dumped in. Fritshaw there, and he'll fire at the length of the ice. Set down by Carlander behind his own goal. Wings are one for two on the power play. We're tied at one. Carlander up ice. At the line for Marley. Lutz will stand him up there. What a hit that was. And they're offsides. Wow. What a beautiful play. Forcing him at the blue line, Lucci knocking him down, and because of that, they were offside. Perfect timing. Timing is everything, right? By the way, stay tuned for the Wheels by RT first intermission report. First, it's downstairs to Jim Stone, then back upstairs where Tim and I will break down this first 20 minutes of hockey. Fritschuk cut up to the loose puck, and the ice hog zone, and sent it back to the wings end. Nida sent it down behind his own goal for Corey Carlander. Carlander will push it up ice now. Far side wall for Brown. Saw Lutz coming. Brown went in high, by the way. Now funny bounce near side. The puck will skip to the neutral zone. Yulansky pressuring. Brown will ram it up the far side. Yulansky will chase Carlander. And it's punched back down low for Brown. One minute left here in the first. One minute to play. Back the other way. Carlander. Up ice near side to Willis. Willis over the line. In the corner now, bank to the point, Carlander. Carlander looking, forced it down low, Drake couldn't handle. Knocked down by Fritscha, wrapped near side, here's Mitzi. Mitzi will skate it to the neutral zone. Now pulled it back to the Rockford side and will dump it back to the wings line. Norderman will step in. Norderman short-handed. His drive is deflected off the near side wall as the puck was on end. 30 seconds left in the frame. And not a very good angle, but not a bad shot. Here's Carlander at the line for Drake. Ralph will break it up. Jens now trying to feed it up ice for Mitzi, but it's flipped into the Ice Ox bench and we'll have a face off, I believe, in the neutral zone. 19.7 left in the opening frame. We're tied at one. 
And you can see that Steve lost the tape and broke it down, and the guys are executing well because when they're pick, passing the puck from the middle to the outside for their zone entry, we've got somebody there stepping up and, and just wrecking their timing completely. Mitzi and Ryan will take it. Mitzi won it. Here's Jens. Jens for Rockford far side. We'll waste some time, and we'll flip it back to the wing side. 12 seconds left. Time for one last charge for Kalamazoo in period one. Tyler Kindle will lead it. Kindle at the center ice line. Kindle over the line, shot, rebound it out. And Ulanski swiped it to the wing, and the horn will sound, and that'll do it for the first frame. Good luck by the Hawks, or by the wing. A nice ovation from the fans. Ulanski Johnson will start up front as Corbet will hop out in five seconds. Lutz and Fritschaw on the defense. And of course, the Carlander Bootland, Willis line <laughs> up front with Elzinga. You know, when you call the game, you, we just, you should just say when they're not on the ice, otherwise everybody can just assume they're on the ice. Yeah. Ulansky and Carlander in the circle. Off the draw, here's Ulansky. Far side, he's being impeded there by Carlander. Puck will slide down low, power play over the wings are one for three. That one backhanded in front, almost turned over. And it's chipped near side for Willis. At the line, Ulansky went flailing for the puck and fell down, but here's Fritzschaw. It banked it up ice for Johnson. Now it'll slide down low, and it's the Wings picking it up. Here's Brown near side. Brown's pass for Poulin. Hit there by Lutz. Now into the mix, Corbet. Willis now hit Lutz. Puck deflected at the center ice line. Johnson will recover, banked it up for Corbet, but too far in front of him. Here's Brown. Looking for Bootland. Bootland fanned on the dump in pass. Got it back. Hammered over there by Johnson. They went down. Now Johnson actually poked it away from Noterman. And Bootland will clear it over the line. Here's Lutz behind the Rockford goal. Cap and Egri will pressure. Fritz shot to Ulansky. Ulansky touched it at the line. Didn't get much on it. And it's cleared up ice. Here come the wings. Drake, but they're off sides. 103 into the second. We're tied at one goal apiece. And Yulansky's at the end of his shift. Certainly he wanted to get it in deep, but it looked like he had very little left to do that. And he was on his backhand when he tried to dump it, so that's why it didn't get in deep. Now they say, you know, empty the tank. And boy, when you're this late in the season, Kalamazoo's 99th game and the Ice Sox, I believe, 95th. The longer you're out there, the really greater toll it takes on your body as the game goes on. You can't recover as quick, right? Right. You need to keep your shifts you know, consistent. Tony's will dump it into the Ice Sox. Own loose puck recovered by Matt Jen's far side. Left it to Besser. Chopped it around for Norderman. Norderman cleared it to the neutral zone. McAllister there, backhands it near side wall in front of the penalty boxes for McLean. He'll gain the ice hogs line and will wrap it in. Far side corner, Drake touched it up the wall for Ralph to pick up. He'll chop it now, Norderman. Norderman over the line. Norderman tried to set it up in front, but McAllister was there. And it's cleared to the line. Besser will block it into the air. Ralph will knock it down and pass it back off to Jens. Jens off the glass, looking up ice for Ralph. Ralph looking to touch it over, but the 50-50 puck was shot back the other way, and the wings are off sides. So they'll drop it way back in the Kalamazoo zone, just inside the line. 1.45 into a 1-1 second period. A lot of stick work off the puck, a lot of stick work, and uh, he's letting it go right now, but you can see neither team likes each other at this point, which is normal. Seven games. Right. These two teams have played more in the last two weeks than they did in the six month regular season. Wings won the dry, here's Marley. To the neutral zone, Letizia there. He'll dump it in, but once again, Watson finished the check and the Hogs have to wait before breaking over the line. As they were off sides, it's worked that back the other way, dumped into the skates of Hessler. Here's Coburn looking up ice for Watson. Lost in skates again. Hessler had his pass popped into the air and here's DeTulio gloving it down. Near side to Tulio, looking in front blocker, saved by Cloutier. Ryan behind the goal. Near side corner, one on one with Coburn, left it deep to Tulio with Letizia now. De Tulio skates around him, in front, De Tulio taking out, penalty coming on the hog, shot fired wide, and that was a mismatch. Marley near side, hammered there by Watson. Hawks can't touch it up, and now they do. And boy, Letizia got taken to school down there, Tim, and it nearly cost him a goal. Well, what he did was, instead of remaining on the defensive side of the puck, he started to chase Detulio. And once you do that as a defenseman, then you're you're chasing uh, butts, they say, to the net. And you can't be doing that. You need to just step back and let him come back to you. And instead, he tried to, you know, get on the offensive side of that play. And that's why he was chasing. And that's why Detulio drew the penalty. And really not a bad penalty to take, I guess, because he was open in the slot. 
I don't even know if he was trying to take the penalty. He was just <laughs> yeah. out of position. Corbet will bank it to the line, held in by Brown on top. Now to the wing, far side, forced away, Corbet! Hog short-handed, Corbet for Ulansky near side. Over the line, Ulansky's drivers deflects it into the netting there by Brown. But the Ice Sox will draw a face-off, deep in the Kalamazoo zone, tied at one here. Almost three minutes into the second. Good effort, and Ulansky, Corbet did a nice job getting the puck to Ulansky, and then I saw Lucci from his defensive position jumping, going hard to the net, so you know, we're playing good hockey right now, and Frenchaw stayed back while Lucy jumped, so good play. Face off to the right side of Nye. Carlander and Ulansky will take the draw. Off the draw, tied up. Ulansky trying to kick it down low. It's picked up Corbet now. Corbet near side. Corbet all the way back to the Rockford line for Fritzschaw. Fritzschaw will stick handle in his own end and now flipped it back to the Kalamazoo zone that wasted about 10 seconds and the wings are restarted with 125 left on their power play Elzinga up ice for Brown near side Brown will gain the line and will wrap it in Fritschuk caught up to it Ulansky was able to shield up Carlander and the puck will roll back to the wings and in Rockford will get a fresh set of forwards out there. Now their zone entry there, they knew we were gonna step up, so they waited for him to step up and chipped it in deep, so we need to be expecting that. Here's Bootlin at the line for Brown. Brown near side. Back to Bootlin down low. Bootlin behind the net, looking for Carlander in front, but passed it off to Elzinga. Back to Bootlin, Bootlin to the wing, Elzinga. Looking down low for DiTulio, DiTulio. And it's swiped away by Lutz, but got it over to Carlander, now Fritjot tied up, Norderman a poke it to the wing, but here's Carlander, Carlander shot, missed it high, Paco rattle to the point, Bunny Bones in front, now a high slot area, Mitzi there, and he'll clear it out, and the Ice Sox caught a huge break down there. 30 left, Rockford will change again, now Mitzi picked it off, Mitzi, shot blocked, rebound, Ralph couldn't get the backhander off, oh, he had a wide open net there, Tim. Now he was still behind the net when he had the puck. Here's Jens now down low. Draco slam him into the back wall. Mitzi up ice, cleared the zone. Wide open net and Rob couldn't find the backhand. Gillis to the middle for Ryan. Ryan over the line. Back on top for Willis to Ryan down low. Looking toward the point. Here's Rob looking up ice. Tipped up for Betts. Hogs are offside though. So Betts couldn't wait. 437 into the second. We're tied at one and Betts was too excited down there. But Ralph did see him, it was a nice play. And uh, the fact that it got tipped, I think is probably why we were offside. If it wasn't tipped, it would have been over faster and I think we wouldn't have been offside. So a drop it just outside the Rockford zone. Logs will switch lines, it'll be Corbet, or excuse me, Doucette's line with Betts and Watson. Well, we're five minutes into the second, you can feel the tension. You know? Yeah, tied game here in game seven. Rockford won and Hassler banked it up ice. Wings are one for four now. It's cleared to the neutral zone over the head of Hassler. Here come the wings. Ryan over the line, drop pass, shot, missed it high. Now to set down though for Betts. Betts board pass to Watson, banked away. Now to set will step in. To set over the line, what a move. To set, but he lost the handle on it. Bank to the point, Letizia. Drive in front, and I will kick it into the netting there. And once again, Hessler took a gamble there, and the puck hopped over him, and it set up almost a three-on-one opportunity. Well, that was a nasty dangle by Doucette. That was nasty. Yeah. And he had Watson coming down the left, and it looked like he was actually trying to get to him. He does see the game, there's no question. Face off to Nye's right. Yeah, he's only played, what, maybe 13 games? Let's look at the sheet here. 14, this is his 15th pro game tonight, all in the playoffs. Off the try, Ulansky and Carlander take each other out. It's played over to Bootland now. Backhanded it over the line. Willis down low, icing will be waved off. Willis, centering pass, hammered back there by Lutz, never got it up. Now it's worked to the point. Brown had it blocked by Ulansky. Passed it up, ice, Johnson. Hogs will jump. Johnson over the line, looking in front, and it hit Corbet in the leg. Pass was behind him, and the wings will clear it out. I'd like to see him step across and just rifle his snapshot. He's got a wicked one. Fritschon now get this, oh look at that hook there by Carlander. Holy smokes, no call. Behind the net, Nye wrapped it around on top. Fritschon hit there by Carlander but held it in. Now here's Brown, Johnson will run into him. Brown will give it up to Elzinga. 
chopped it off the near side glass. Now in with a big hit, there was Jenson Willis. Puck coughed up, Brown got it back and cleared. Jens will knock it down at the line. In the Rockford zone now with Bootland pressuring. Uses the glass looking for Ralph. Now it's skipped over. Here's in the high side. Norman shot. Nine with the save. And it's stuck in the goal. Norman got it on the breakdown. It's 2-1 Rockford. Jason Norman with a big goal. Nobody for Caleb and Zuma to pick it up. And Norman made a pay. Shut down, thinking the whistle was going to blow. But Norman was in the right position to see where the puck was, still between his legs, and kept pounding on it. And it dribbled in, and I don't think Atlas hit the back of the net either. Almost identical to Nyes, except Nyes was a little bit more finesse. Norman's a little bit more grinding. The next shift is really important. Two to one, Rockford here in the second. Played back to the Rockford end. Blue Jay will set it down. Here's Jens down though. Looking near side for Norderman. Norderman couldn't clear it out. Now it's knocked down by Drake. For McLean. And Mitzi will wrap it around. McAllister on top will work it deep. Kevin Egri behind the goal for McLean. McLean stopped in the corner. Jens will get the helper. Everyone falling everywhere. Selrick pass. That one broken up. Here's Norderman for Besser. Besser over the line. Besser fires winning on nine. I will love it. Jens will get the assist on that goal by Noterman. And that is his fifth tally of the postseason. Nice play by Besser. He didn't have much, but he saw Ralph streaking down the right side, so he put the puck on that. Unfortunately, it was right in nine glove, but it would have been down on the ice. We might have had ourselves a rebound backside goal. Face off to Nice, right at the Metro Center rocket again. Off the draw, one there by Duchette. Watson breaking through. Watson in the corner for Colburn. To Watson now. Watson hit there by Gillis. Watson behind the net. Looking. Fan on the centering pass, and Kindle will work it to Ryan. Derek Ryan now over the line. Shot deflected by Letizia to the corner. Hessler chopped it up the far side. Chased there by DeTulio. Worked it down though. Hessler now. Oh boy. Hit Kindle and no call, and here comes Rockford again. Coburn, he'll dump it in. Down low for Marley. Marley, hit there by Coburn. Gillis out with it. Doucette, knocked it down. Looking for what? Uh, that's Johnson. Oh, Johnson hammered on the back wall by Ryan. To Doucette. Doucette in front for Letizia, but it was deflected up the near side. Here's Ulansky hesitating. Down low to Johnson. On the wing. Johnson with Ryan for Corbet now. Johnson to Corbet near side wall. He'll turn and fire. Blocked in front shot. It was fired just wide. The goal line went out, but Yulansky missed the net. Puck is flipped back the other way. Lutz in a foot race. Icing will be waved off. Here's Lutz now. Long pass up ice. Tipped at the line for Johnson. Elzinga got back. That one banked back the other way. Fritzsche hit the linesman. Corbet will dump it in. Oh, Yulansky had a beat there, Tim, and everybody in the building, including the goal judge, knew it. But it didn't. Go between the pipes. I thought he was taken down on his way to the net. Here's Willis, drop pass. Ralph in front, Celery pass. Carlander, broken up now. Far side wall, Noterman. They'll saucer it up, ice for Mitzi. Over the line, Celery pass and nine. Couldn't quite reach it, but nobody on the doorstep for Rockford. Backhanded deep by Noterman, here's Elzinga. Eight and a half into the second, two one Rockford. Puck to the neutral zone, Willis. Off the near side wall, Fritzschaw now will chase it down. Behind the goal with Bootland on his back. Fritzschaw spun away. Wrapped it hard near side, nobody for the Hogs on the wing. Campanigri, had it poked away and it's cleared back the other way. Icing will be waved off as it'll die before crossing the line and Rockford will get a much needed change. Long pass up ice, that sails the length. Icing waved off again, deflected by Kalamazoo. Lutz now, had it popped into the air, Drake down low. Mitzi to it first, Mitzi ran in front, and apparently coming up on the wings as Mitzi was interfered with, and the Hogs on the power play, 9-14, into the second. High sticking for sure, and the referee's looking at Mitzi to see if he drew blood. And guys are really working hard. I mean, you can see both teams are, and yeah. there's a lot of plays that are not being made, you know, cleanly because the intensity of the game, you know. Rockford's fourth power play. They're all for three, and they're leading 2-1. We're doing a nice job, except for that last play where we sent it to nobody, of, yeah. of chipping it out, 
but not getting icing and chipping it in, and that's and then banging and then paying off. Yulansky, Corbett, and Johnson. Carlander in the circle. It was actually won by Yulansky, but Carlander reached behind him and swiped it up back to his point. And it's fired over the Rockford line where Cloutier will stick it down. Drake will get the high sticking minor. Here's Besser. Over the line, rattles it in. Far side corner, Corbet. Lost it down low, got it back. Now it's blocked to Carlander. That one chipped to the neutral zone. Besser, board pass to Jens. Bootland will have to pull back. Jens now, up ice, looking for Yulansky, breaking up. Yulansky, a front shot, he missed it just wide. Here's Corbet now. Back to Yulansky down low. Yulansky looking to the point. To Jens, hesitates. Yulansky to Jens in the middle. Jens near side. Back to looking for Yulansky. Now it's centered in front and broken up easily by McAllister. One minute left on the Hawks power play. Wings will change. Here's Ralph at the line. Kicked it over. Corbet high side. Corbet shot. Nye with a save. Kicked it over the top of the... Of the goal, Besser to help dig it out with Ralph, but it slides over to McAllister, and he'll slap it back in on Cloutier. 45 on the power play, Wings complete their line change, as do the Ice Hogs. Mitzi will glide up ice at the line for Norderman. To the point, Lutz, shot, hit Ralph. Lutz will chase down the rebound. Brings it back to the point, found Mitzi to Jens now. Near side, Jens looking, hesitates. Lutz is one-timer, that was wide. Mitzi caught up to the rebound. Back to Lutz on top. Lutz to Noderman. 17 left on the power play. Noderman for Mitzi to Noderman. Drive, that one deflecting up into the crowd. And we'll have a face-off in the Kalamazoo zone with 11 seconds left on the power play. 11-0-3 into the second, it's 2-1 Rockford. And when we move the puck quick, we're getting opportunities. When we catch the puck, stand and wait, try and find the lane, then they, they really do a great job of stopping it. So if we can just keep moving the puck quicker, uh, we'll have more opportunities like we did there. If the Hawks can win the faceoff here, they'll have an opportunity. It's to the left of Nye. And Neil Lutz, Lansky will take it. Lutz needs to know there's a guy coming out of the box in 11 seconds. Off the draw, Carliner want to clean the El Singer, slapped it to the point over the head of... Fritz, John Rockford is 0 for 4 on the power play. Here's Fritz, John now. Behind his own goal, fan on the pass. Got it back, oh boy. Carlander lurking in the high slot area. Giving up to Corbet near side. Corbet will hammer it in. Hopped over the stick of nine, here's Ulansky. Ulansky down low for Johnson. Shoved away from him, now Brown with it. Brown hit by Johnson who needs a change with Corbet. Here come the wings. Back the other way, it's worked to the line. Bootland hammered it off the linesman's leg. Wings are off sides, now do set. Do set up ice. He'll backhand it in. Watson down low, we'll try to give Chase Nye there. It's wrapped around, Coburn. Coburn looking for Watson. To the point, Besser's drive. Kick behind the net by Nye. Now do set. Do set to Coburn. Coburn's show was just wide. Now Besser. Watson will let it slide for Doucette. Do set. Bouncing puck down there to Watson. Coburn behind the goal now. Brown will shove him. Watson, one-timer was well wide. Jens now on top. Jens for set to the middle. Besser, bouncing puck, held in. That one wrapped down low. Elzinga hit by Watson. Doucette will gather in the loose puck. Set it up, but the Hogs need a change. Here come the wings. Caponigri now. He'll chip into the ice hog zone. Besser down low. Caponigri all over him, now Jens trying to give it back to Coburn. Norderman in to help, Norderman will take it out. Back the other way, Norderman at the center ice line, will backhand it in. This will allow Rockford to change, which that was important because they were tired. Here come the wings, Caponigri at the line, Hessler will clear. Now Ralph bats it down, knock down Caponigri. 13 minute mark in the second, 2-1 Rockford. That one hammered to the wings bench. Minute break, Rockford by a goal on the Ice Hawks Broadcasting Network. 13 minute mark here in the second frame. It's two to one, Rockford. Welcome back to game seven at the Rockford Metro Center, at the Rockford Metro Center right now. And it's, uh, it's a tight one. It is a tight one. And I think we're doing a nice job of playing a higher percentage game of chipping it out, chipping it in. And uh, it's paying off for us because we're getting opportunities to finish our checks 
And I think Reeds is waiting for his power play, you know, by wrestling the guys a little bit right here. Because usually he plays his big boys off the breaks like that. And that's what Martinson was waiting for. It's the Campanigri Drake line. Puck now picked off Besser. Over the line. He'll dump it in. Ralph will try to give Chase Tonys for McAllister now. Behind the net. Outlet pass deflected by Mitzi. Knocked down Noterman. Noterman hammered it over. Nye. He'll set it down behind the goal. Noterman steps up. McAllister again for Tony's near side wall. Tony's long pass picked off. Ralph. His drive is deflected into Nye. And the Ice Knocks needed a change. That's why Ralph probably didn't take another step or two. But still, the Wings now starting to turn the puck over a bit. Well, another example of a defenseman making a pass from the hash mark cross ice, and it's right there. And, you know, it's a, just a low percentage play. When it works, it looks cool, but the fact is that you play percentages. Well, they're all for the last two on it. That's not a good percentage. <laughs> And I'm not a math major. No, you're not. Let's confirm that right now. Carlander won the draw deep in his own zone against Ulansky. Johnson stepped in. Here's Corbet with Carlander on his back. Corbet breaks free. Now Brown will step in to help. Carlander got it back. Carlander working it up ice. Off the skate of Bootland. Fritzsche, he'll backhand it at the line. It was blocked down. And now here's Willis. 14 minute mark in the second. 2 1 Hogs. Corbett blocked it, here's Ulansky. Ulansky fanned on it, trying to cross it over, got it to Johnson at the line. And he'll exit Corbett and he'll dump it in. Johnson down low. Johnson looking for Watson. Watson looking to Coburn. Coburn lost it in the corner, Johnson. Chopped it to Coburn, around for Watson, but cut out by Elzinga. Banked it around for Bootland. Look out up ice, long pass, Willis. Willis looking up ice now, around Fritzsche who bumped him off. Great shot hit over there by Bootlin. Puck in the corner. Willis stepped in, hit to set, but Fritzsche dug it out to Watson now. Watson will fire one in. Nye lost it in the corner. Here's Marley down low with Watson. He hammered him into the corner. Coburn hard into the corner. Puck clear, and here's Besser. To Jens. Hogs will change, dumped in. Nye chopped it down. Pressure there by Betts. Caught up to by Jens. Jens shot in front. Nye will steer it to the side. Doucette will swoop in to pick it up. To Mitzi. Now Betts. That's to Mitzi again. Hogs doing a, cycle, a bit of cycling. On top, Jens. To the middle. Hold it back to the point. He'll fire in front. And I will kick it away in traffic. Near side, Willis. Hit by Norman, but here come the wings. Kinder, here's the Tulio at the line. Near side, Mitzi ran into him and hammered him to the ice. Mitzi behind the goal. Caught up the first by the wings, to Tulio. Down low, Mitzi again ran into him. Freed up to Gillis, now here's Betts. He'll clear, trying to find Norderman. At the line, Jens. Chipped it there, now here's Kindle back the other way. Rockford wanted to change, but Kindle will push. Draw pass at the line. Shot, Cloutier with the save. Juggle the rebound. Now Ryan's shot was blocked to the wing. Kindle shot in front, rebound loose. McLean missed the top shot. Now McAllister broke the stick. He played it with the stick, and that's a penalty. Wins will get a penalty as McAllister played it with the broken stick. Time for the penalty, 16:04. No doubt about it, Jim. But they thought they didn't dodge a bullet. They dodged an atom bomb down there. They did dodge a bomb. Two things. One, this period we have cycled as well as I've seen the team cycle all year long. And the other thing is, their defenseman, did you see Marley, when he was, he had lots of beat by four feet, he turned around and waited to try and brace himself and didn't even get to the puck. Yeah. So, I mean, those are the little things that are happening. In terms of that stick breaking, I think that's a little unfair in terms of, he shot the puck, I don't think he realized it until he tried to play it and dropped it, and it was too late. I mean, you got to give the player some kind of opportunity to realize his stick's broken. Right, right. So, well, uh, what is that, a delay a game? Well, here we go. And Hessler's got a broken stick. So he'll go back to the bench and get a new one. Kind of a quick call on that, but we'll take it. How many penalties now do we have each? Uh, well, it was even at four apiece. Now the ice are... So we know who gets the next one. <laughs> yeah. And Rockford is all for four. Here's the Hogs winning the draw. Carlander at the line for Bootland. Now Mo, now Bootlin on the wing. Played it back to the neutral zone for Brown. Crossed to Elzinga. Back to Brown. It's a game of keep away. At the line, Carliner will tip it over. 
Now Ulansky, at a 20 seconds off of the power play. Lutz to Hessler, hammered it in. Icing is waved off, now they're gonna call it. Well, what is that? Oh boy, a miscommunication, and uh, the Ice Sox catch a break there. They're gonna drop it to the left of nine. Well, if they go to center ice, oh, it's yeah. the kick, or, or the wing. You know, I mean, their player clearly tipped it. There's absolutely no way that's an icing, and now... And the guy on this side, the near side, called it right. when it was fired from the far side. And we had the puck in their zone, now it's center ice. It's one by DeTulio, and here's Elzinga slapping it back to the Rockford zone. Lucia will set it down for Besser. 3.20 left in the second, 2 1 Hogs. 1.20 left on their power. Besser for Corbet, over the line. Corbet, centering pass. Ulansky shot. That was blocked in traffic, and back the other way. It's pushed by Elzinga. 2 1 3 Elzinga. Down low now, Besser trying to hack it away from him. That's worked over to Corbet. Hogs trying to gain puck control. Two wings down low. Drake does a great job of getting back deep, trying to freeze that puck. Boy, he's eating a lot of time off of this power play. And it's one out by the Hawks. Here's Ulansky. Ooh, dangerous pass there. Off ice to nobody. And Gillis will dump it in. Ulansky got it back. Carl Leonard Bootland back out. 40 left on the power play. Ulansky dumped it in. And the Wings will pick it up uncontested. Slapped the near side behind Noterman. And another icing. Colucci will wait for it. Carliner will take it away. Look out in front, wide open net, and Carliner couldn't pick up the loose puck. Hodge right now are being out-muscled and outworked in their own zone. Here's Noterman. Center ice at the line, dumped it in, and his hesitation forced an offsides and absolutely got awful on the power play right now. It's embarrassing. That was terrible. The they're pressuring us in our zone. They're pressuring us. We just need to move it. I mean, they're doing a nice job of killing right there. And, uh, you know, if they're going to be committed that deep, if we can get that puck out, we can jump and get some odd man rushes, but we're not doing it. Mitzi and Carlander will take the draw. Carlander won it, but the Hogs will pick it up with Lutz. Only 10 left on the power play. Norman now, he'll wrap it in. Took a hit down there. Hogs are going to drop to Wolf for five here in a second. Mitzi tied up, trying to get it back to Norman. That's slapped up into the netting. And will drop it to the right side of nine. 154 left in the second two. One stay tuned for the call for second intermission report. It's downstairs to Jim Stone. And then Tim and I will break down the second frame with stats and highlights. And the Lonnie Scarp and Max on the town scoreboard. That shows Carlander's hand-eye coordination because that puck was actually it could have been a high stick. It doesn't matter, but he swung down like a baseball bat and hit it clean. Home run. Yeah. Over the fence. Off the draw. Wings on control. Did Tulio down low to McAllister. McAllister looking up. Ice picked off Ralph. Ralph will dump it in. Now Tony's. Tony's board pass blocked by Ralph. Ralph looking. Down low now for Rockford, dropped it off, Mitzi, shot, blocked down nine, rebound loose, chopped to the point, Besser, crossed it for Missy behind him, Mitzi picked it up on the wing, Mitzi now, wrapped it in for Noterman, Noterman for Mitzi, Mitzi behind the goal there, tied up by Tony's, Jeez. almost tackled, now Ralph whacked at by Drake, Mitzi near side wall, tied up on the wing, Ralph down low, Corbet and McAllister will fight for it, down low now, they're tied up. Mitzi out with it. Centering pass blocked. Got it back. Around to Corbet. Corbet in front. Shot blocked in front. Johnson with the rebound. Johnson looking to Mitzi. Mitzi to Corbet. Corbet behind the goal now for Johnson to flex it in front, but Johnson had committed. And the puck worked to the neutral zone. Under a minute left in the second. Here's Jens. Jens circled in his own end. Jen shaking bank at the line. High slot area. Jens trying to drop it up, but Mitzi was changing. Now Willis will bump him up and he'll play. Behind his own goal. That one hammered up ice for Bootland. Hopped over his stick. Fritsch on Bootland down low. And the corner collide. And swung out to Carlander. Back into the mix with Fritsch on Bootland. 20 seconds left. Johnson down low. Fritsch there. 
Fritsch on the near side. Carlander all over him. Wrapped up the far side wing to Ulansky. Board pass now. Here comes Besser, two on two with Watson. At the line, Watson's drive was wide. Seven seconds left. Besser will tie it up. Three seconds, Ulansky, centering pass, nobody home, the horn sounds, and the Ice Sox head to the locker room with a 2-1 lead. This is our home! Carlander and Ulansky will take the draws. Off the draw, one by Rockford, Corbain will chop it in. Down low now, Brown, Corbain down there just knocked down, trying to skate to the loose puck and it's cleared. Ulansky will dump it in again. Here's Elzinga. Behind his own goal, will start it from there. Near side to Carlander. Carlander had the stick lifted by Johnson. He'll dump it in again, Rockford will change. 25 second shift there, Tim. Here's Brown, long shot, that one deflected behind the Rockford goal. Fritscha will chop it off, trying to get a whistle down there. Ralph now will clear the zone. Tonys will pick it up in his own then. Up to Bootland, cross to behind everyone. Campanigri hopped on, picked it up. Norderman at the line for Ralph. Ralph to Mitzi far side. Mitzi down low, looking in front. Now here's Jens. Shot! That was wide and I never saw it. Here's Ralph for Rockford to Mitzi down low. Mitzi in the corner. Banked it to Ralph. Ralph near side, no support there. And it's recovered by Elzinga. And it's worked up to Bootland. That one fired over. Bootland hit there by Norderman. Hans will change again. That line for Kalamazoo finally stepping off. Ralph, that one's wrapped in. Here's Nye for Drake. Drake lost it, Nye fell down. Tony's to pick it up. Watson gives chase. Now Tony's looking up ice, fires it to the center ice line. Besser there to Coburn. That one fired over Nye. Will send it down for Tony's. Tony's behind his own goal. He'll work it up ice. In the neutral zone, Tony's stick check, swung back the other way, Doucette on the break! Doucette in front, he missed it well wide, nowhere close. Here's Letizia to Doucette down low, looking in front, shot, save! Rebound loose down there, nobody can find it. Wicks pick it up to the corner. Here's Coburn down low. Oh man, two opportunities. Doucette now, who's out of gas? That's fired back the other way, and this will be an icing. It's in on Kluge, so it's waved off. Oh man, a breakaway, Tim. And Doucette missed the net by about a foot and a half. Nice one-handed pass by Watson, just a no-look, knowing that Doucette was going there. Mitzi's pass behind Johnson, but Ralph is there. He'll chop it in. Set down by Nye, here's Marley. Hit by Mitzi, but the outlet pass picked up by the wings. Into the neutral zone, now Norderman. He'll send it over. Mitzi will catch up to it first. Mitzi down low, behind Marley. Mitzi now, behind the goal. Working a near side. Mitzi on the back end, never got a shot off and it's cleared. Ryan cropped up ice for Ryan. Ryan working with Lutz. Lutz now. Back ended pass was blocked. Behind the goal, sitting on the rail. Ryan out with it. Far side wall. Here's Mitzi now. His pass was blocked. Ryan will chop it down for Kendall. Far side, Ryan shot. Kluge here with a save. Tertullia with the rebound. Tied up behind the net. Now here's Fritzsche. Trying to clear it up the far wall, blocked in traffic over there. Ryan to the point, but Norderman is there. Norderman, center ice line will touch it in. Rockford will change. Here's Brown. 3.20 in to the third. Ulansky stood up at the line by Brown. Picked up the loose puck, gave it up to Elzinga. Chipped over to Willis at the line for Bullen. Bullen! Nice play there by the Hawks, cleared it to the point. Brown drive, that one knocked just wide by Cloutier. At the point, Elzinga couldn't hold. Here's Brown, fired it over, gloved down there by Jens. Both teams with good chances here to start the third. Yulansky for Johnson over the line. Corbe, but they're offsides. Nobody can pick up the rolling puck. 3.50 into the third, two to one Rockford. And Mike, every shot you can see people in the stands putting their hands on their heads and taking deep breaths and this is really exciting, isn't it? This is big time here, packed house at the Metro Center. I mean, we had to put extensions on the press box today to accommodate all the media. Yulansky and Carlander will take it again. Carlander won it back to Brown. Brown crossed it, Elzinga. Elzinga to Brown. 
playing catch in their own zone. Brown, up ice, at the line, that went over. Everyone's still gonna be an icing. As Fritjot touched it up before Willis could catch it. And we'll bring it back to the wing zone. Now here's an interesting dilemma. Carlander and Butlin are used to playing every other shift. And Yulansky and the, and the boys aren't, but well, look what uh, Steve's doing now. He's going ahead and changing because he knows he can't play them as much as these guys play right. and still get the same performance level out of them. Doucette will take it against Carlander. To the right of Nye. Off the draw, Watson in front trying to pick it up. Watson on the wing now. Down low to Doucette. Doucette hit there by Brown. Bruce in to help. Overskated there by Carlander. Now it's shoved up the near side. Carlander and Doucette. Carlander fell down. Puck near side wing. Coburn there with Bootland. And Bootland will slide it down low for Brown. Jeff Brown has a loose puck behind his own goal. Forced far side to the neutral zone. That one skipped back the other way. And icing waved off as it's in on Cloutier. Wings will change. Here's Fritzschaw. Board pass up ice. That'll sail the length of the ice. This will be an icing as Gillis will touch it. And we'll bring it back to the Rockford zone. 441 into the third with a 2-1 Rockford lead in game seven. And there's an example of, you know, the tension in the game and everything, but he had time to actually, you know, move his feet a little bit and get a different lane. And of course they're being told, let's chip it out, chip it in, let's play percentage hockey. But it's, you know, so we ice the puck. But guys need to relax a little bit, still play your game, but you need to relax, controlled aggression. Colburn will step in for Doucette against Mike McLean, the rookie centerman. To the left of Cloutier, one there by Coburn. Here's Fritzsche. Fritzsche, near side, trying to clear it out. Blocked in traffic over there. John Searle, the referee, stuck in the middle of things. Now, Fritzsche jousting down there. Puck, high slot area, kick to the line. Here's Doucette digging it out. Doucette, long drive. Nye will block it up the far side wall. Marley and Watson down though. Watson swooped in and picked it up. Lost in skates now. Marley played it to the point, back the other way now. Cabanigri, and the wing's got numbers. At the line, Gillis will just dump it in. Jens will work it up the far side wall. Cabanigri there, down low. Look out behind the net, McLean. McLean will work the corner now. Besser is picked down there. Centering pass, Cloutier with a great save. Rebound bank behind the goal. Here's Watson. Watson to the center ice line, will send it in. Mitzi in a foot race with Gillis. Mitzi, tied up down there. Trying to dig it out, he'll slide it up the far side for Ralph. Ralph to Mitzi. Mitzi on the wing. Looking, backhanded for Noterman, hit him in the arm. Detulio picked it up and Ryan will free it up. Buck slides to the Rockford end for Jens. Jens, hit over in the corner. Centering pass in front, Detulio. Got knocked down. Buck pops up in the air. Picked up there by Noterman. McAllister will hold. Noterman trying to work it behind Tony's. It's shoved to the corner. Now Ralph will chip in the other side. Here's McAllister, shot in front. Floats in with another save. Rebound set in front and nobody there for the win. Oh, the ice off, again dodge another one. Puck is iced and it'll be touched up by McAllister. But once again, Tim, you gotta get the puck out of the zone. Yeah, you, you know, you can't play panic hockey in terms of get the puck and just send it out. You know, you have to still you know, play your game and support each other. The five foot pass is sometimes better than just kind of bring it around or chip it out. So, Luce looked outstanding there. You know what? We got two good hockey teams out here today. 6 19 into the third, 2 1 Rockford. Mitzi and Carlander to Cloutier's left. Mitzi won the big draw. Cloutier knocked it down. Jen wrapped it up for Ralph. Ralph will chip it back to the wing zone. Icing is waved off. Rockford will change. Big time win there. Now here's Willis at the line. Lutz will hit him. And kick the puck behind the Rockford goal for Fritzschaw. Banked it up to the line. Johnson couldn't clear. Setting over on the far side wall. Willis there with Carlander. And a big hit by Fritzschaw leveling Carlander. Now Lutz taken out by Bootland. Bootland with the loose puck to the point for Brown. Brown shot in front, hit Willis. Banked over to Johnson. Johnson to use the boards and the puck will skip over the wings line. Icing will be called again. Seven minutes into the third, two to one. And all the Ice Hogs on their heels after such a solid start to the third period. It was another example that Johnson had about six, seven feet to move. He had center support, so did a little move. But you know, they're they're playing that high percentage game, just chip it out. And you know, you get, at some point, you know, you're gonna have to still play the game. You gotta play the game. Plus he had two wingers to work with. McLean I mean. won it. Off the draw, shot was fired over the top of the goal. 
another drive, kicked right off the far side by Cloutier. Corbet, board pass to the neutral zone. Campanigri there, at the line now. Gave it up, picked off Corbet. Corbet will lead the rush. Trying to skate around Marley. Corbet shot it just wide. He'll chase down his own rebound, lost it behind him. Marley is there. Marley near his side, now Ralph to, trying to force it free. Ralph picked it off for Mitzi. Ralph now down low, shot, and I knocked it away. Here's Noterman. Noterman, far side wall. Down behind the goal for Ralph. Back to Noterman. Hacked in his skates and chipped to the neutral zone. Now Jens, his shot deflected way up into the crowd. And we'll drop it in the neutral zone. Tim, a franchise record for postseason hockey, 6,000. 236 here at the Rockford Metro Center tonight. Geez, with uh, two days notice, that's uh, outstanding and it you know shows the support that these guys have in Rockford. We so. thank everyone for coming out and of course everyone for listening. Off the draw, McAllister won. Far side, or not McAllister, he picked it up off the faceoff win. Dumped back to the Rockford zone. Hessler's pass blocked by Ryan. Down low for Rycroft to Ryan. Hopped over his stick. Watson trying to force it free. It's held in on top. Everybody on top trying to hold. Letizia with Watson. He'll chip it free for Rockford. Behind Tony's who had done a great job holding the point there. Great job. McAllister's pass at the line, knocked down Colburn. Colburn trying to thread the needle. It's blocked by Natulio. At the line now for Ryan. Ryan poked away there by Letizia. And the Hogs will chop it into their own bench. 8-20 into the third, 2-1 Rockford. Well, drop it to Cloutier's right hand side, just on top of the face-off circle. It'll be Ulansky taking the draw for Rockford against Corey Carlander of Kalamazoo. Off the draw, Carlander will pick it up, play it to the point for Brown. Brown shot, that was just wide. Poulin had the stick lifted there by Johnson, play to the point, the little Zinga for Willis. To Carlander on the near side wall. Carlander cycles. Here's Fritz Young, collides with Willis. Carlander over to help. Now it's worked up the near side. Ulansky knocked it down with a skin. Here's Fritz Young. Fritz Young crossed it. Corbet. Corbet at the center ice line, slaps it in. Puck rattles up the near side. Johnson there. Hit by Bootlin. Now Carlander in the middle. Long pass to Willis. His pass up ice. Bootlin off the end of his stick. Fritz will play him into the wall. Now Lutz for Rockford. Slapped it up the far side and into the neutral zone. Brown is there. Jeff Brown for Elzinga. Elzinga near side. Brown, or Bootlin, playing it behind the goal and nobody there. Now Elzinga chased it down and he'll clear. Flipped in by Lutz. Puck bounces in the corner for Mitzi. In front centering pass, Ralph a step behind. Here's Noterman. He'll turn and fire one in front. Ralph will set down the loose puck to Jens on top. His drive is deflected up into the netting and will drop it inside the zone. Nine and a half into the third, it's two to one Rockford. As we approach the middle stages of this third frame of game seven. And we're so much better with the puck in the offensive zone than in the defensive zone. Defensive zone, we're like one hand chipping and yeah. just kind of get anything we can to get it out. Offensively, we look more comfortable with the puck and creating some opportunities. Face off to the left hand side of Nye. Mitzi will take it on top of the face off circle. Trapped in his skates, won it. Ralph had the stick picked up and it's cleared. Back the other way now, McLean dumped it in. Besser for Rockford down low. Around the far side wall, Noterman. Noterman sealed it off and cleared. Pass was a step ahead of Ralph. Wings dump it back in. Icing now waved off. Here's Jens. Jens touched it to Besser. Besser near side to Mitzi. Mitzi to the middle for Besser. It's picked up, Campanigri. Campanigri to the back end. Cloutier with a save, rebound in the corner. That one set up in front. Nobody there for the wings. Here's Ralph up ice to Mitzi. Two on two with Watson. Ralph will join the mix. Ralph looking for Ralph, or Mitzi looking for Ralph. And it's cleared up the near side to Campanigri. Over the line, his drive. Cloutier with the save. Not out a rebound, but it's poked to the wing. Mitzi now. Cleared the zone. Past the midway point right there. The Ice Sox were waiting for the puck, Tim. Marley pulled up, and then Johnson levels him. Actually, that was Kendall. Pass up ice for Ryan. Letizia, touch pass, held in. Detulio had it swiped away from him into the neutral zone. 
Marley got back into the play and flipped it in. Here's Hessler now though. Around for Johnson, blocked there, Gill is now cleared. Icing waved off as Marley will chase it down. Looking up ice, tipped at the line, set. he'll bank it in. 11 minute mark, 2-1 Rockford. Brown down low, almost lost it, got it back. Far side now, worked it up ice, in front of everyone. Icing waved off again, here's Fritzsche to Lutz for Ulansky. Ulansky near side, cleared the zone, right to the center ice line though, and it's hammered back in by Elzinga. Lutz for Rockford, behind the Rockford goal for Fritzsche. Fritzsche will move the puck near side to Ulansky. Ulansky will gather it in. He'll touch it over the line, Doucette will chase. Down low there with Elzinga. Elzinga sealed him off, and then Doucette pinned against the wall by Brown, and the puck cleared to the neutral zone for Lutz to play. Lutz will use the far side wall. Now Brown to pick it up for Kalamazoo. Here's Elzinga to Brown. Brown in the middle. Over the line, far side. Dropped it off on top, Bootlin. Centering pass, picked off Noterman. Up to Ralph. Ralph will set down the rolling puck. Long drive and a glove save by Nye. Here's Bootlin. Around to Elzinga near side. Ralph will step in. Centering pass, Johnson shot. He missed it just high. Minute time out, Rockford by a goal on the Hogs Broadcasting Network. 7.51 left in regulation. It's 2-1 Rockford. Out shooting the wings, 30 to 25. What's on the line? Just the league title. Face off to Nye's left side. Neil Lansky will take it against Carlander. Over 6,000 on their feet. And the draw, it's tied up down there. Slides free, Corvey down low. Wrapped up the far side wall, but Tony's is there. Tony's looking up ice. Threads it up to Bootlin. Bootlin will dump it in. Puck down low to Fritzsche. Fritzsche, backhands and looking for Corbett, hit the referee. Fritzsche out of the middle. Here's Ulansky, three on two. Ulansky now, far side to Johnson, in the middle. Lutz, he fanned on the one-timer. Puck rim to the point, Fritzsche will hold it in. And back the other way now, long pass to McAllister for Willis. Willis in front for Moulin, who fanned on it. Now here's Fritzsche, near side. Lutz trying to dig it out, near side wall, it's cleared. Oh boy, that was a... Three on two, that was worked pretty well. Johnson with a good look up, but the pass just a step ahead of Lutz who couldn't connect. I'd rather see Johnson shoot that there. He was right in the middle of the ice, and he's got a wicked cannon. And goes. we saw it right before the break. It disappears off his stick, it just doesn't go in the net. <laughs> Icing on Kalamazoo, 13.05 into the third. Two to one, Rockford. Colburn will take it against McLean. Coburn, Watson, and set. Jens and Besser on top. Off the draw, McLean fell down, but won it anyways. Here's Marley. Marley's long pass up ice. It'll be another icing, as it'll be touched up by Jens, so the Hawks catch a break All there. Right, so we'll bring it back to the Kalamazoo zone. Just announcing the attendance here, and listen to him at the Metro Center. That's very impressive. The 11th largest crowd in Ice Hawks history. Face off to Nye's left. Doucette and McLean, I should say right hand side. Doucette won that one falling down. Besser on top. Rimmed it deep near side. Here's Watson. Cuts it off before Gillis could get there. Watson had it chopped away from him. Down low behind Doucette. Doucette now looking for Watson. Watson far side wall. Back to Doucette. Doucette hit by Gillis, now Colburn to step in. Colburn, near side, Watson. He'll pick it up for the Hogs to Colburn. Colburn, down to Watson. Watson now to Doucette. Doucette, back to Watson. He'll leave it in the corner far side. Capanigri over there. Picked it up, bumped off by Colburn, but it's cleared. And here's Lucas Drake who chipped it in. 14 minute mark here in the third. Two to one Rockford. Rimmed around, Ralph will clear the zone. Isinga will be waved off, Elzinga a dangerous pass. Ralph a step behind, he'll get it back from Brown. Near side to Rycroft, over his stick. Letizia for Rockford now. Letizia left it behind him, now lost it. Jens cleared it to the point, Brown over, shot it down low. Banked up the near side wall. Ralph will race over to pick it up. Up ice to Mitzi. 
Mitzi over the line. Mitzi shot. Noterman picked it up. Shot. Rebound loose. Ralph couldn't catch it. Now got it in the corner. There's Mitzi near side. El Saigo with Noterman. Now it'll slide to Ralph down though. Ralph to Noterman. Noterman. Near side. Back to Ralph. Ralph in the corner now. Mitzi in to help. Noterman steps off. Corbet on. Hogs will try to kill time down there. Ralph will ram it in. Cor or Corbet will chase it down. Corbet down low. Ran into Brown. Now to Mitzi behind the goal. Mitzi looking. Mitzi dropped it off to Corbet. Ran into Elzinga. And here back the other way is to Tulio. He'll kick it up ice. Off ice for Ryan. Centering pass. Broken up. Now look out. Gillis. Drive was blocked wide by Hessler. Behind the goal now. Rycroft working with Johnson. Carlander step in. Puck will be forced free to Letizia. Letizia's board pass for Ulansky. And that's a should be an icing unless Ulansky can touch it. And he's cut off there by Gillis. And it's touched up by Kendall. Four and a half left in regulation. It's two to one. Rockford on top. They're both letting them play. I mean, there could be a lot of little interference calls and stuff, but it's been enjoyable to call the game without talking about Searle has called a magnificent game. Face off to the right side of Cloutier. Yolansky and Carlander, and a big draw. Off the draw, tied up, near side. One to the point, Bulin, looking, still looking. Johnson gets back up. Bulin, centering pass, picked up Yolansky. Back the other way now, he'll gain the center ice line and touches it in, Rockford will change. Kindle down low now. Now working up ice, Kindle over the line. Willis had his pass blocked, got it back on top. Looking for Carlander down low. Looking for Bulin, Carlander now. High slot area, swipe to the point. Shot, in traffic, popped into the air, Lutz will knock it down. Lutz near side. His pass deflected into the ice hogs bench and will drop it. And the neutral zone, 3.51 left in regulation, and not a soul sitting at the Rockford Metro Center. Both clubs will change lines. Mitzi's line out against the Tulio's line. Now we'll swap them again. Colburn's line out. Ralph and Watson out there. Off the draw to Tulio, swiped it to the wing. Colburn will chop it up the near side. Now Colburn trying to break through to slide over the line. And it's picked up by Brown for Elzinga. Elzinga looking near side. Long pass to Tulio. In the neutral zone behind Jens. And chopped up into the crowd. Caleb Betts hasn't played a whole much this side. Uh, since the first frame, and you gotta wonder if his injury, he is injured, is uh, nagging him too bad, or too much. Could be, could be. I'm, I'm wondering if Steve's thinking here in the last three minutes he's gonna have Mitzi and Yulansky together, I don't know. Well, well, he just spotted him a little bit, now he's putting Norman and Mitzi back out there with Ralph. And Mitzi won it from Tulio. back in the Rockford zone, Jens. He'll flip it up ice, and that'll be an icing, and that wasn't a very solid play because it'll bring the puck back to the Rockford zone, and I guarantee Carlander's line will hop out. And there's an example of we had time to, to make a play, but we stood there and you know, did the chip thing, but it went, it went icing, and you're right now the Carlander's line's out there. Gillis and Kindle on top, actually Bootlin will play on top. Carlander will try to win it over his left shoulder to Nick Bootlin. 3.25 left in regulation, Rockford by a goal. Face off the Cloutier's right. Mitzi and Carlander, linesman waits, and will reset. Off the draw, Mitzi won the big face off. Here's Jens now. Jens, tied up over there. Wing converge on it, wrap it in. Besser far side wall. Besser trying to chip it, free deflected in front. Mitzi will bank it up the near side for Ralph. Ralph now, crossed it to the neutral zone. Gillis is there, to the middle for Willis, and he'll dump it in. Besser far side, Bootlin now, forced to behind the goal to Willis. Centering pass in front, Carlander missed it just high. Here's Mitzi, near side, it's held in on top. 
Mitzi got it back, shifted for Ralph. And that will roll back to the wings end. And this will be an icing on Rockford again, Tim. And right now the Wings have the Ice Hogs on their heels as the Wings are in desperation mode. Well, I mean, the forecheck is simple. They know that we're taking no risks up the middle and they are really pinching hard with two and three guys on the boards and they're there, you know. It's that uh, catch 22, you know. You, you know what we want to do is keep it outside and yet that's where they're going to be. So it's a, it's a tough one. And, you know, you're, you're playing the percentage chip out when actually we have opportunities, if we could reverse the puck, we could walk out a little bit. But it's uh, you know easier said than done, certainly in a high stress game like this. 2.43 left in regulation, 2-1 Rockford. And I think they're discussing if the Wings had touched that puck before it was iced. And they're gonna say they did not. So the Ice Hogs have to stay out there. Detulio's line out, and he'll take Mitzi onto the faceoff circle. Detulio won it, here's Elzinga. Ralph converges on the point. Elzinga wrapped it in. Here's Mitzi around for Norderman. Norderman fell down as he ran into Brown. Here's the Tulio. Centering pass is tipped wide by Besser. Mitzi for Norderman. Chopped it to the line. Held in. Now Ralph over. Puck into the air. Norderman bats it free. At the center ice line, Elzinga. That one wrapped in behind the Ice Sox goal. His pass is knocked away by Lucas Drake. And the corner, Fritja. Fritja dumped. Near side, it's chipped off the near side into the neutral zone. Rockford will get fresh skaters out. We approach the 18 minute mark. Brown, his dump in pass glove by Fritzsche. Fritzsche, banked it up ice looking for Johnson but it's held. Near side wall. Wings cross it to the middle, Johnson knocks it down. At the center ice line, Johnson will touch it in deep. Brown down though, shoves it near side. Long pass. Is knocked down by Lutz. Off ice to Johnson. Johnson for Corbet over the line. Corbet high slot. Shot. Goal! It is Corbet! He's run for the 3 1 lead! At the 1 33 mark of the third period! Johnson will help his 3 1! This place is complete pandemonium! Quick transition, we didn't go D to D, we went straight up and we had a nice play and then Corbet with a finish was just Wow, what a shot! Here is the goal call from Chris Goldsman. There's the goal call, the Wings will see when they pull the goalie down by a pair. Nye is coming out, looking at the bench. Now it's hacked in front, Kluge will cover. 118 left in regulation. Still plenty of time for Kalamazoo. Absolutely, you know, I mean, don't get too excited. Don't be a fan as a player. You need to take care of your business, do your job. Fans are here watching you guys play. Take care of business. When it's over, you can celebrate right now. It's all business. 118 left in regulation. The Ice Hogs are on top of the wings by a score of three to one. And now he does have Mitzi and Yulansky together, Mike. The last minute 18. And he knows he'll get a timeout. Well, there we go. And this timeout on the ice will keep it here. It's brought to you by Genesis Hair Studio, the official hair salon of your Rockwood Ice Hogs. Call them at 815-654-6025. Genesis Hair Studio is located at 5420 North Second Tree. Mention the Ice Hogs and receive $2 off your next haircut. Now, you can't just ice the puck. I know they're, they're playing on adrenaline down there. You gotta clear the zone, and then once you get it to the center ice line, then go for the empty net. And a lot of times, easier said than done. The number one priority here, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, is just getting the puck out. Be on the defensive side of all scrums, get in the shooting lanes, do whatever it takes. Now, I'm a big believer with a two-goal lead with a minute left, 
that if you have an opportunity, I'm willing to take the risk reward. If it's an open shot. If it's an open shot, because the reward is the game's over and the risk is another face off. So I mean, that's something that you guys decided as a team though. Everybody agrees we're willing to either take that shot or we're gonna get over the red line. I tell you what, I'm glad I got my headsets on. I just took them off for a second. It is deafening in here. Yes, it is. Face off the Clutch is right, Mitzi and Carlander in the circle. Off the draw, it's one there by Carlander. Mitzi to tie it up, it's worked down low. Fritschaw, hit by McAllister. He'll play in front, wrapped to the point, held by Bootland. Bank down low, behind the goal. Lucas strikes, centering pass, Yulansky, he'll make a move. He was dropped down and no call. One minute left in regulation. Back the other way now, Ryan, chipped it at the line. Stood up there, Corbe will chip it free. He's in a foot race. Corbe far side. Corbe, oh, he hit there by Bootland and back the other way come the wings. Ryan, forced at the line by Ulansky. Ulansky sent down the mountain, puck chopped in front. Nobody there. Fritschow will chip it free. 30 seconds left, the Hawks will change. Johnson on. Drake at the line, popped off the far side wall. Johnson looking, shot, fired off the side of the goal. Johnson will try to chase it down. Catherine Agri there, and Johnson almost prevented the icing. But there is 18.1 seconds, and Jazz Johnson fires up the crowd. <laughs> little razzle dazzle with Chaz. He's dancing on the ice right now. He's got to go to Wingding for you, Stoner. Yeah. By the way, stay tuned for the post game show. We'll bring you everything, full coverage. We'll go downstairs to Gemstone, the three stars of the game. We will bring you the trophy presentation. What a great interview with Steve, too. That'll be interesting. What a great job he's Number done. Number six. Yeah, I mean, think about that. Three different leagues. Off the draw, Rockford won it. Won it. Fritschaw, looking up ice, cleared it to the point. On top now, knocked down at the line, cleared. Nine seconds left. Brown, far side. Tulio, three seconds left. Shot camp and Agri, the hard sound. Rockford win the hockey champions. The ice sounds with the Colonial Cup. Stand proud, Rockford, you have a hockey champion. Sticks wind on the ice. Gloves all over the place. Complete pandemonium. You got Mike and Chris hugging up here and they've done such a Great job all year supporting this team. You got guys hugging everywhere. Rockford wins game seven. Three to one and look at them mob each other down there. Downstairs to Jim Stone who's in the middle of the whole thing. Absolute bedlam down here. Wow. Chavs Johnson is dancing. There's a big scrum down at the bottom. I'm going to go grab coach Steve Martinson and see what he has to say. He said this was the best team he ever brought here. Coach, God, how sweet is number six, buddy? Oh, I thank everybody for coming out. What a great crowd. 6,200 for our last game. Just awesome. You know, six championships, three different leagues. This is unbelievable, buddy. Well, it's been a long year, so this, I mean, this is great. I came here, you know, wanted to win and finally got it. You know what? It's, it's a storybook ending for this whole, whole thing. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's a great ending. Great bunch of guys and a lot of contributors. And just... Couldn't have asked for a better ending. Get it at home with 6,200. Absolutely. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks. That's Coach Steve wow. Martinson. And it's well deserved. And uh, it is the best team that this that this town has ever seen. Yeah, no question about it. It's unbelievable to see him win. To see this crowd was unbelievable. I'm going to hand this off to uh, Richard Brosell right now. And then. Uh, wow, what a game. Yoli. How's it feel, buddy? Yeah, you can't say that on the radio, but that's okay. He's excited. Yeah, tell tell me about it, man. That was that was a tense hockey game. We left everything out there that we had. Uh, part of this crowd, it was hard to get tired. These guys kept us in the whole game. That was a huge goal by Cord, at the end kind of put it away there. So I'm happy as hell right now. Seems that championships are kind of like old hat for you, aren't they? Well, I, it's a good thing. I mean, I like winning, that's for sure. They never get old. Congratulations. By the way, how about the, how about the big mascot in the in the, yeah. in the handshake line? <laughs> At the end there. Yeah. Who should I go grab? How about Noterman? How about two two series clinching game winning us. goals. Talk to me, buddy. I can't. Oh, this is incredible. 
I'm absolutely gassed, but who cares? This is incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, there's Preston Mitzi. Who do you want me How to How about grab? Frederick Lucier, Fred probably the MVP of the finals? Well, there's Freddie. We'll go grab him. Freddie, congratulations. All right, thanks. Now talk about uh, winning a championship. Boy, it's awesome. It's the best feeling. And I mean, I, I can't explain my words right now. It's just, it's too good. I know you've been a part of championship teams before, but being able to uh, participate in it, you said you sat a little bit before to be a big part of it and a major part of it. What's that like? Well, it's always better when you play. I mean, when you're there and you're not playing, you don't get your boot for the, you know, for the team, but you're always there mentally for the guys. This time was, you know, it was my chance to prove that I can play in big games, and we did it, so it's awesome. You're outstanding. Congratulations. Thank you. It's Frederick Coluthier of the Rockford Ice Hogs. The best goalie that we've ever had in Rockford. Let's go over here. The guy was here when we were not a good hockey team. He's here now that we're a championship hockey team. Nathan, congratulations, buddy. <laughs> How's it feel? Ten times better than I thought it would. Yeah? It's unbelievable. Talk about this game tonight, man. That was impressive. up. We said we don't lose at home, but we don't. It's unbelievable. You gotta, you, gotta go you, got, you gotta go get something? Maybe he's got a he's got a Yeah, club. he does. He, he need, he's got something to get there, some yeah. hardware. All right. Now, uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, when we start the ceremony, Jim, I'm gonna unplug you to plug in the PA mic if I can find it. You do that. Where is it? There's the cup, it's out on the ice. Richard Brozell's out there. Yeah, you gotta talk with Noterman at some point too. I, you know what, after they get the cup and skate it around a little bit, I will grab them, I'll let you guys go back to doing it. All right, that sounds good. All right. That sounds good. And it looks like we're about ready. Thanks Jim, we'll check back with you in a few. Jim Stone reporting ringside and uh, what a feeling those guys have to be feeling down there right now. Unbelievable, especially Frederick Lucia. Especially all of them, yeah, I mean, certainly. And Nathan uh, Luce, captain from Dayton. Ladies and gentlemen, let's send it down to the ice with United Hockey League Commissioner Richard Brosell. <laughs> Rockford fans. What a fitting way to uh, end my tenure with the booze from the fans. Thank you very much. All right, guys, are you ready for what you all came to witness tonight? Mr. Nathan Lutz, come over here. It is an honor and an extreme privilege to hand you for the very last time in my tenure the Colonial Cup to the Rockford Ice Hogs Colonial Cup champions. Thank you once again, everyone, for tuning in to another Ice Hogs Rewind, your Rockford Ice Hogs for the 2007 UHL Colonial Cup champions. What a fun trip down memory lane tonight was. And for me to watch all the excitement of you guys at the Rockford Metro Center, now the BMO, it was certainly exhilarating and a fun way to start the weekend. A very special thanks to our special guest, the pregame show, Steve Martinson, the second winning as head coach in North American professional hockey history, reigning ECHL general manager of the year, and of course the bench boss for your Ice Hogs in that 2007 campaign. Great to catch up with him and all the wonderful stories he had to tell about the Ice Hogs that season and how they were able to push through the postseason and get the city's first pro hockey title. Well, we look forward to bringing you more Ice Hog Rewinds here in the coming days. As always, check out IceHogs.com for the latest news and notes. We'll have a whole bunch of goodies for you out there as well. Things that you guys can do uh, from the comfort of your home to stay engaged and uh, share your love for Rockford Ice Hogs hockey. So, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had a wonderful time watching the uh, Colonial Cup Finals Game 7 action tonight. And we will talk to you on Ice Hogs TV and Ice Hogs Rewind once again soon.